be moderating the show. But Bless always does a very good job. And, th and so a big thank you to Bless. A uh, big thank you to Ahima, Ivy, and the uh, rest of the crew for holding the fourth uh, all the time. Uh, we're grateful to you. Now, this morning, I've been joined in the studios by Solomon Ousu, um, who happens to be my birth uh, mate. Um, if I say birth mate, I mean I'm 23rd, he's 24th. <laughs> so, 23rd, 24th. So, I'm sure next year we'll celebrate our birthday together. And uh, he's also a fellow Katangi. Once a, a fellow, always a fellow. And so I am excited that Solo is here uh, as well. Good morning to you, Solo. Good morning, my brother. You're I looking trust... great. You're Thank looking you very much. Yeah. Now, now I know I'm looking good. I've started yeah. my um, yeah. my walk again. Oh, you know, you I, used like... to, I used to walk every now and then. But yeah. for some strange, unexplained or inexplicable reasons, I stopped. Oh, really? But now I've gone back, so I'm walking. Now nice, I, my right. whole body is, uh, is aching. Yeah, it's oh, not really? easy. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's not that, 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 that's right. Uh, that's it's not right. easy at all. That's it's not right. easy at all. But yeah... <laughs> We'll, we'll go through we it. Shall we shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Hey, yeah, how's MPP? Oh, sorry. I mean, <laughs> how's Afro Franto? Hey, Afro Franto. Afro <laughs> fly, 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 the movement is moving. I think you should have used Church of Fly. You know, Church of Fly can kill the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Especially no, good morning. No, you know in class we read something that the crab entered the elephants. Yeah, <laughs> from the water boat. Yeah, so probably. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Rista, good morning. Good morning. Uh, the last time we had an encounter was when something happened and uh, we needed to resolve. Since then, we've not no, met. I have been here. Oh, you've been here. Yeah. You remember, you hosted me once. Oh, so we sort, we sorted our truce. We sorted it, and, and then I, I, I was, I was, I think I was here about a month or two ago. Oh, but why don't you frequent here? Um, anytime Bless calls me, I may not. On, you are on, on, on C high seas. I may not be. But he never comes here with country. any fish. That is bad. No, I'm, you see, no, I, I, I'm not on sea. I may not be. But you country. never can. You speak no, for okay. the fishermen. Because and you come here without fish. Okay, you know what? <laughs> so, look, I think we should sign an agreement. Yes, yes, yes. That yes. on our birthday next year, yeah, yeah, it brings. It will supply us with fish. You are, uh, you enough, have a enough to feed oh. about a thousand people. Oh. Yeah, more to teach. I don't think that a ton of tuna. You, you, it will take you a, a very long time to even eat it. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm, really? Yeah. Oh, I see. So, don't worry. Thousand people. He said we oh. shouldn't worry. Okay, we are not worried. <laughs> How can we worry? I mean, I think uh, he is not uh, Baumia, so we can trust him. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning to your honorable Professor Hamza Adam, MP for Kumungu. Yes, I've not met you before, have I? Not at all. Not Why? at all. I don't know. Uh, uh, coincidentally, I always meet with Bless. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time in the constituency. Yes. So, we are not yes. stable. You know, members of parliament in the north who spend time with. Uh, presenters from Pan African Television always get to retain their seats. Yeah, that is. Uh, so that is uh, speaking in parable. So, okay, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I hear. I hear. I hear. Good morning to you. Good morning, you. Good morning, Good morning well, it's, fine. A, it's a pleasure. Fine. It's a pleasure. Right. So let me share the topics with you um, so that we can uh, get straight into action. Oh, Liberia oh, goes. Which one? The phone. Mm, where oh. yellow survive? No, this one. You see the crack safe. <laughs> they, they, they say new ones have come. Oh, iPhone 15. <laughs> uh, but we are not. We are not going to buy any more. Uh, the same design. <laughs> <laughs> I even want to change to Samsung. So if somebody can buy me both, like the one you are using. <laughs> <laughs> Liberia goes to pose tomorrow. And by the way, we have, I think, um, on the continent, we have a lot of uh, viewers from Liberia. So this morning's conversation, I'm sure, will, uh, will be appreciated by the people in Liberia. They go, they go to post tomorrow. Uh, George Weah is there. I don't know. I've not been following him, honestly. I don't know his performance, whether or not he's been performing well. But uh, we, we, I'm sure my panelists may have some information that I do not have. Police arrest 16 over UTV invasion. Information Ministry, NMC, condemn attacks, Ghanaian Times. Uh, IMF comments Ghana's growth. I, I, <laughs> says strong policy reform commitments are bearing fruit. SAC Board of Directors of uh, TOR for non-performance, TUC to government. And these are the topics that we've tabled for our conversation this morning. Hopefully, we are able to deal with all these matters um, on the show. Let me remind you that we are streaming live on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Pan African Television. We are also on YouTube. And so for those of you who are watching us online, be kind enough uh, to share your views with us on those platforms. And then uh, we'll read the messages here for you. Liberia goes to polls. Let me start with you, Rochester. 
Liberia, I've not been following their politics, to be honest with you. So I may be, um, uh, it may be lost on me, really, uh, to, to talk or, in fact, ask questions relative to, you know, the, uh, what is happening in Liberia. But I think generally, we've yeah. been hearing stories of the performance of Georgia and things like that. People are not really ex yeah. uh, yeah, too yeah. impressed with his performance. I think they had high expectations of him. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, I hear you, Mr. Albert, I know. Yes. I don't know what that Yes, means. I, I had to. You had to. Uh, I had that, uh, what, that Kia Pia or something like that. <laughs> I don't know what that's <laughs> well, true. It's I, an I, allegation. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a rumor. <laughs> In every room, yeah. there's an uh, Ayota. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yes, you, know, you know, Georgia made several efforts to be president. Yeah. He happened to have come face to face with very experienced uh, Salif Johnson. And I think he won the first round, and then Salif overturned that yeah. during the roundoff, and then mm. uh, Salif was president. Mm. Um, he did everything, including going back to school, developing himself, going back to university just so he could be president of Liberia. I think one of the things Liberians were expecting was that this was a rich former footballer mm. who was coming to be president. And for some strange reason, I have a few Liberian friends who came as a result of the war. They, they were Ghanaians, actually. So. Mm. For some strange reason, the, the, the thinking was, because you know when he was doing, he was playing football, mm. he was doing a lot of philanthropic Absolutely, activities yeah. for Liberia. Yeah, so yeah. for some strange reason, the thinking was that oh, when Georgia becomes president, he was going to spend his own money to develop Liberia. And this is a country that had come out of war. Mm. And Liberia probably may be placed on the same pedestal as Rwanda. Mm. Because when the country comes out of war, uh, you have a lot of support from the international community. Mm. You have a lot of Liberians who um, had the opportunity to travel mm. and develop themselves in countries like US, Canada, and UK mm. because they were seen as refugees who were granted refugee status. And so they've had a number of people who are also out of the country to work probably what you need is a leadership that is able to harness all those resources the opportunities that came it didn't start with um mm. georgia because it was not the president after the war mm. i think chastela was and then johnson Sirleaf took over from chastela mm. and then georgia but they they've not been all of them have not been able to use that opportunity mm. to try and rebuild liberia and make Liberia an envy of a country within the West African sub-region. Remember, Liberia is also one country that was not colonized at all. Mm. Yeah, the, it was a slave that were brought to Liberia and had a, that relationship with the, with the US. And so there were opportunities. That's why you had a lot of uh, people from other West African countries moving into Liberia. Was, then it was easier to travel from Liberia to America and they were getting a lot of direct support from the international mm -hmm. community. Liberia is not a big country, it's a very small country, a fairly small country. And so um, Georgia, probably the expectation was mm -hmm. that he was going to develop Liberia as a result of being mm -hmm. an international icon, a footballer, and he was going to leverage on that personality right. to be able to bring development to the people of Liberia, mm -hmm. create a lot more jobs, so that at least there are people around Bujumburam and others who go back into their country and enjoy that new um, development that Georgia was bringing. Mm. But I don't think that he's been able to do that. Because leadership is not about being a, a, a popular icon. Leadership takes more than that. Mm. It also has to do with the team that you work with and the, and the psyche that you come mm. into leadership. You see, probably he may have achieved this. Him. And I tell people that you have people who have personal dreams. That personal dream has nothing to do with what, whether the person is able to perform or not. He had a personal dream of becoming a president. And once he achieves that, there's some level of complacency that sets in. After what I wanted to be was to be president. And the development of people of the country becomes secondary. But that is not to suggest that nothing happened at all. And 
you, you, uh, some development had taken place. But the pace at which we expect those development to take place and to have Liberia up there is, is not being seen. And that is why I, I don't know how this election is going to I have not followed the elections because Liberia is also comparatively a small country. And so development around Liberia, unlike Nigeria, where everybody will be following because whatever happens in Nigeria affects, affects yeah. the entire West African yeah. sub-region. Mm. Development around Liberia <clears throat> is not a matter that you have people following so much. Mm. Except for people who may have business interests in Liberia or may have some relationship uh, that was around Sierra Leone and things that happen in Sierra Leone directly affect Liberia. So then they follow closely what happens in Liberia. Mm. But well, we wish them well. Mm -hmm. We expect that they, they have an election, uh, a peaceful election. Um, let the best candidate win. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, we need a West African sub region that mm -hmm. is stable, is stable mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that is geared towards development. Right. Uh, my, um, before I, I move to uh, Solo, uh, you know, my, my um, issue really, or perhaps maybe maybe modified into a question has to do with uh, their general growth, their, the outlook of their economy. Um, I did some little reading right now where um, after COVID-19, I think in 2021, because of some higher external demands on their exports, you know, they were able to, the economy rebound a little bit. Um, but subsequently, you realize that agriculture, you know, is, is plummeting mining is plummeting so there's nothing really that is is happening for liberia and i'm happy that you found a way of explaining to our viewers and, and even me that it's a very small country by extension the presumption would be that development should be easier really but we are not seeing that now my question really perhaps is about the fact that are we not fast pacing the growth of Liberia, considering the fact that it is a country that is just coming out of war and you need years and years and years and years to be able to build the, even the basics upon which you can now develop or expand you know, development. And I'm saying this in respect of the fact that we are pulling parity with other um, countries in a sub-region you know, who have experienced, for instance, democracy for over 20 years, some 30 years, and things like that. And we are comparing their expeditious growth with the snail pace growth of Liberia. Uh, don't you think that perhaps that will be a mismatch in terms of mm -hmm. analytical No, uh, it's overview? not a mismatch. Mm. Liberia had an advantage over other countries in West Africa. Mm. For instance, a number of their young refugees were taken out of uh, West Africa, out of Liberia, into U.S. and other places and developed. So they could develop. Now, they had most of their debt cancelled as a result of the war. There are countries contributing to rebuild the li uh, Liberia from the, 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 the scrambles of the war. And so they, they had a lot of, of opportunity to leverage on. I'm not putting those ones at the doorsteps of Georgia because those started with Chastela came to uh, Sally Johnson, Johnson yeah. before Georgia had taken over. Mm. So they had an opportunity to start rebuilding with a lot of international and donor support, with the fact that they had young people that had moved out and developed expertise, and so they could actually rely on those human capital that they had the opportunity to develop for free outside Liberia and ship them back into Liberia to help rebuild a country that has suffered from mm. war. Mm. So, and at the time, they, they also had the opportunity to attract a lot of investment because mm. if they were rebuilding, then you, you get people to come into invest. construction and mm. invest into the, in the country. And like I said, it's not too big a country. They, they may not have the opportunity of having a huge population that would be, make Liberia a huge market for uh, businesses, but then it also had the opportunity of producing and selling onto the international market, which means that the their net export should be higher 
looking at their population. So if they could produce, for instance, a lot of agricultural um, products and even sell on the West African sub-region, they were likely to export more than import. So um, it, is, it is not an excuse that they had come from mm. out of war. They should have taken advantage of the war situation and the opportunities and the goodwill that came with it, mm. having come out of war, to rebuild their country. Mm. And that's all right. Yeah. Well, um, um, I may agree with you in part, but I still may disagree with you on another level. But I will leave it at that because I'm not a panelist. So let me come to you. I mean, the, 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 and Rista makes a very, very important point um, about how uh, economically they may not be as viable you know, or they may not be as a big giant to change the economic narrative on the continent. Um, I, I, I would also want to flip the conversation and look at it from the ramifications of if there's a, and God forbid, but if there's any war arising out of the elections, the replications that it may have on the sub-region, particularly Ghana, and Ghana, on the basis of the experiences that we've had in the past, you know, we have the Jumbram camp and things like that because of the war in Liberia, etc. Et et yeah. So now, how, should you, how do you think they should conduct themselves going into to this election? And my disagree, again, that's one question. But my disagreement with, um, you know, Rista is also in respect of the fact that you do not expect a country, irrespective of all the support, external support that they, they, they got after the, the war, to build um, or to build within a short space of time, particularly when you are now beginning to realign the minds of the people, realign policy, redirect things, you know, to bring all of them together to, uh, to form a conglomerative force that will enable the, the country to, to be developed, you know, to its full potential. So I am, but looking at it from that perspective to say that, Maybe we are comparing them wrongly. <laughs> and, and if you look at Rwanda and the comparison of the, you know, that um, Mr. Mafio sought to, 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 to pull, Rwanda has had, after Habyarimana died, or rather killed, murdered, whatever, had, has had only one president. In, that's Paul Kagame, who has steered the affairs of Rwanda for, from 1992, I believe, till now. And they've not, they've not had a shift. So his focus, his direction, um, you know, at rebuilding the country is still very, very straight. There's not been any um, you know, different political ideology affecting the direction of growth that perhaps Pogami has for his country. It may have its own negative effect, but it's working at this material moment. But if you look at Liberia, Liberia is sort of practicing what Ghana and Nigeria and a few other African countries are practicing, which is change of government. You know, so this government will come with its own ideologies. This government will come with its own policy and things like that. So there's no trajectory, specific direct trajectory of growth for the country. And we are also still rushing them. So don't you think that we should allow them some space. Maybe when they spend 40 years, 50 years, and they are still the way they are, then we can have cause to complain. Don't you think so? Uh, good morning, once good again. Morning. Uh, good morning to me and uh, Prof. Uh, Kwame, ordinarily, I would have taken your, your position, but then in terms of governance, we don't have that luxury. Hmm. We don't have that luxury because human lives are involved. Hmm. Uh, the mistakes of any leader in a particular country causes human lives, mm. and, and that is why I cannot take that position. My difficulty with Liberia is that at the time they voted for George Oponria, they mm. shouldn't have voted for him. I think they chose populism over real development mm. because I have followed him carefully, and I don't seem to see his real cut policies for the people of Liberia. Yeah, it's just that he was an ex-footballer, he led the country as popular. a captain, popular, <laughs> and they voted for him. And, and the effect of that is showing in Liberia. If you go to Liberia today, the youth are not better off as they were before Open Warrior took over. They are still unemployed. Mass unemployment is in Liberia. 
the same infrastructural conditions they took over. I mean, a minimal improvement, but not substantial, because there is no clear-cut plan to develop the country. Mm. Again, corruption has really bedeviled Oupon Weir's administration mm. to the extent that a whole uh, a central bank of Liberia, mm. $104 million vanished into 10 air. Wow. His own chief of staff and then the uh, uh, chief prosecutor were accused of embezzling close to 2 million euro. Mm. He himself, some 22 million euro is nowhere to be found. Mm. And that is the story of Liberia. But then to, to, to answer your question as to how they should behave in order not to send the country back to any turmoil, I mean, they themselves are in a better position to advise themselves. If they enjoy those periods of civil wars, that brought them, some of them, to Ghana to mm. occupy Budumbura and other West African countries, and they think it's the best thing for them. I mean, they don't need Solomon sitting in Ghana here to advise them. In the same way, I will not advise any Ghanaian to go and fight. I will also encourage them that they go through the process and vote for a candidate mm. that will better serve their interests and not a populist candidate. Look, the, the election that is going to take place tomorrow, uh, from a hindsight, I see upon we are winning again, but that is the people of Liberia. He's going to win again because the main challenges of the election, uh, the former vice president, Wakai, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. the businessman, Alexander Cummins, you know, they were in the unitary uh, uh, coalition in 2017, and they fought against Oponwa, even with that Oponwa won. Now, these two have split it and gone their way. Yeah. Even when you were together, you didn't sit you up. Didn't sit up. Now you have split it, and so you have given advantage to Oponwa. The only thing that people are saying could work against Oponwa is that, you know, Prince Johnson, the former warlord, mm. he used to support upon where now he's not supporting upon where he has shifted to the former vice president and they believe that this may sway the support base of the warlords mm. uh, from upon where to the other and that uh, it's not going to be i see upon where winning and winning comfortably but if he does he must at, at this time organize the country properly you see one of the problems that west africa and for that matter africa we have is that quite we don't have a national agenda mm. Well, last did you hear the National Pl uh, Development Planning Commission of Ghana mm. address the nation? But we have a National De uh, uh, Development Planning Commission that is supposed to oversee our developmental agenda. Mm. You have politicians coming out to rather come and address us, so it's like a further development. Mm. This political party comes and says, oh, we, wa we believe that we have to use Accra Road. The other political party comes and says, we have to use Cape Coast Road to get to Kumasi. Mm. It doesn't work that way. There must be a central team running through all political parties and their manifestos and for that matter, our agenda. Upon we are, we are go back to the drawing board. Organize intellectuals together with the private sector and, and, and those that matter in Nigeria, uh, Liberia mm. and put forward a comprehensive development plan for the country. If you come and tell me, for instance, that in 2018 uh, you gave tuition, free tuition to undergrads, and for that matter, you have done something in Liberia, that is, a, uh, that, 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 that is not a serious position. Because if the people were working, if they were working and then earning something good, they could afford their. Uh, the tuition fees, you understand. If you tell me you have uh, increased access to electricity and then reduce uh, electricity tariffs, that is the work of every government. Why? But you, you were put there to uh, make sure that the people were in darkness or what? You see, this business of coming to tell me, <laughs> and we cheaping governance, mm. coming to tell me that I, I, when I came, I constructed rules is the most useless argument I can ever hear. I, I am giving you my tax revenue every month. This water here, the moment to buy NHI uh, uh, and whatever is on it, I'll give you that money. Not because you have your beauty, not because you are short or tall, not because your name is this or that, but because I expect you to give me certain basic necessities. You give me these things by virtue of me paying you, and you say I should clap for you. Clap for you for what? In fact, on the contrary, if you fail to do, you are supposed to be jailed. Because it means you have misapplied my tax revenue. So, mm. Opoia must not go on that target. But like I said, 2.1 million people are going to vote uh, tomorrow. It's very easy. 
if you really want to manipulate the system mm. to do so. And the good thing is that when I check with Liberia, Monrovia, for instance, uh, it's very calm. Mm. Uh, there seems not to be too much tension at this stage. I think the people of Liberia are learning from what happened in the past that it does not pay to fight. Mm. And this is the country and its offsprings mm. that suffers in the end of this. You're still watching the news program segment here on Pan African Television. My name is Kwame Ousudan. So you just listened to Register on this Liberian issue. You've listened to Solomon Ousu as well. Let's now go to Prof. Prof. Uh, um, good morning. morning. Once again, morning. let me uh, also say good morning to my co panelists. Uh, let me check, just take one minute uh, mm. of your time mm. to congratulate the good people of Kumongo. Mm. Over the weekend, there was um, a very competitive football match between Kumongo and Savilogo. You know, the two, the two districts or constituencies are rivals. Mm. And so um, as part of mobilizing fans to support mm. the ongoing construction of the Yannas Palace, um, there was a football match, you know, um, under the courtesy of the Yana between the two rival districts. And in fact, uh, the people of Kumbongo put up sterling performance by defeating the, uh, the people of Savulgu. It was towards the end, just two minutes uh, of the time that the referee assist them, assisted them to be able to equalize. equalize. Well, you know, well, <laughs> are you from Savulgu? Are you, are you from from but this is a bias of time. <laughs> <laughs> How can you have an MP of Bumbu? Uh, uh, let me learn. What is happening is that we have always beaten them. No, 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 no. So no, no, no. what my, my I what I we are going to uh we are very generous people. Yes. And so I our doors are open to the people of Savlogu okay. to come for academy in <laughs> Kumbongu so that we can begin Wait, to... So did you win this match? We did. Ah, you won. Eh? Yeah, we won. But it was just, just, but just two minutes to the time that the referee decided to assist them to equalize. Oh, so it was a draw. We won. No, but penalties. Draw. Penalties. No, if we take away the assisted... No! Why <laughs> 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 you see why? You see why I, I disagreed with him? <laughs> this is a very nice report. No, so who won? <laughs> in the final, who won? Who won? Anyway, anyway, so congratulations to the uh, to both teams. Um, it was a very uh, well attended match. Is it the one you filled, they filled the stadium or something? Yes. Yeah, the, I saw it. I mean, for oh. the yeah, first the time, was full. It was well, very, very uh, full for the first time. So I saw it. People said this well is not a political rally. This is not. Well this is actually football. Attended by over twenty chiefs. Okay. Oh, it was really a very um, a good show that um, one shouldn't have missed. All right, so um, I think we have to continue uh, to do more um, mm. to um, consolidate the peace that we are enjoying in Dagbon. Right. Uh, coming back to the, uh, the subject matter, Liberia is a country that is recovering from war. Mm. Unfortunately, it has also been um, hit by a lot of disasters. Mm. Um, after the war, you remember in 2014, they were hit by Ebola. Mm. This Ebola took away almost 4,800 Liberians. Look mm. at this um, country, the small population, country with a small population, uh, and losing almost 4,800. And then subsequently, we, uh, we all suffered the COVID mm. and also going through the um, the, 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 the Russian Ukraine war. So it's not been easy for them. And let me also uh, commend the, the woman president, so the lady as uh, Johnson Selling. Yeah. I mean, she did so well uh, to the extent that um, she was recognized by uh, the uh, Nobel, Nobel, Nobel mm -hmm. Award yeah. in somewhere 2017. I think she did so well trying to, um, to put together a country. So it was no um wonder that in uh, when she ran for the second term even though she had initially indi indicated that she wasn't going to run again when she she, she ran again she won almost, uh, of almost 90 percent of the votes and so um now we have george upon we are coming to take over from uh, johnson selling um for me i have been monitoring George up, upon West performance 
if you monitor his ultras, even at the ECOWAS level, I mean, you realize that he's somebody who is poised for action. He means good for his, for his people. He has been able to catalog his achievements. I will just read a few of them, I mean, so far, trying to justify the reason why the country should renew um, his mandate. Mm. Again, if you look at the area of health, the area of education, he has, I mean, achieved a number of them. For example, in the area of health, um, he has constructed about 14 military hospitals and eight hospitals in Southeast Liberia, mm. including Bapolu and the Redemption Hospital. Mm. He has also increased doctor's monthly salary from $700 mm. to $2,000. Okay. He has also added to 2,500 health workers. Liberian dollars, yeah. Liberian, yeah. Yes, Liberian, Liberian dollars. Yeah. Yeah. dollars. Yeah. Okay, so he has also he has also added two thousand five hundred health workers to the payroll and doctors' health uh, pool dried up. Mm. Now um, he has also regularized and increased salaries for five hundred supplementary workers, and, and it goes on and on. In the area of education, he has established free public college education that benefits over ten thousand Liberians every year. Mm. He has also um, introduced free WAIC that benefits more than 40,000 students yearly. He has also started building uh, about, about 28 high schools and 18 early childhood schools. He has also given 3,500 supplementary teachers permanent teachers status and it goes on and on. So he has cut a lot. If you uh, read you will find that he has been able to put together reasons why the uh, Nigerians, uh, Liberians should renew his mandate. For me, I think that Ni uh, Liberians are going to be the best people to judge his mm. performance, whether he is living up to expectation or otherwise. We shall see that tomorrow. Mm. What we can advise is, like uh, my colleague Sulu did indicate, is that we cannot afford to go back to the Hades. We cannot afford to go back to war days. They should try as much as possible and conduct themselves very well. And then we go to the pools peacefully. Oh. Whoever emerges, let's all give support to the person to continue. It mm -hmm. is the interest of all of us as West Africans to see the, the, the region grow in peace, yeah. not in pieces. Mm. Rest in my case. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we're still here at uh, the studios of Pan-African Television. This is the News for Every segment. We have been discussing uh, Liberia. They are going to post tomorrow to elect or re-elect uh, their leader. Well, we've, we've given um, our, our thoughts on the Liberian economy, the governance process, and all other ancillary matters, which are uh, incidental to the final determination of who leads um, Liberia tomorrow. Now, let's come back home because we have our own internal matters. And uh, let me start off with this um, story, which happened, uh, I think, um, yes, two days ago, I believe, yes, uh, at the premises or the studios of UTV, where some 16 hoodlums uh, invaded the studios of, uh, of UTV in disagreement with what they describe as uh, an unequal or an imbalanced representation of panelists on a program which, which is shown on UTV. Now they invaded uh, the place, you know, wanting to, uh, as it were, uh, what well, they were demanding an apology uh, from one of the panelists, A plus. Uh, because they, in their estimation, A plus has been very critical of government, has been insulting government, has been insulting the president, has been, and what they said, our president, <laughs> as if the president is only for the people who were in the studios, who <laughs> went to the studio, our president, our vice president, please, the president is for all of us. The vice president is for all of us. It's not the property of uh, MPP and NDC. And again, before we even started the show, I was speaking to Richard and, uh, and uh, Solo about this, this, these matters that when we are done with elections, the president is no longer the property of the party on whose ticket, you know, he or she uh, stood for the presidency. 
when we are done, the president is for all Ghanaians. So this thing about, you know, our president, my president, I, I think that it is one of the reasons why our, polit our politics is sinking and our democracy deteriorating. Because of this, um, you know, I don't know how to describe it, the inclination by people to just believe that, oh, once the person is coming from our stock, it means that the person is the president is my president, not the president for Ghanaians. So you know we all condemned it uh, in no uncertain terms. But what actually triggered, or what actually should be the pivot around which this conversation is had, is in relation to whether or not this perception, um, you know, it was well, it was just it, it was merely a perception until recently, where it appears that it's no longer a perception, but it's becoming a reality. Whether or not the media is being attacked, whether or not press freedom is um, is, is being brutalized, um, you know. So this, 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 this is what we ought to, to look at. We will, I will, in the course of the conversation, read to you what the Ministry of uh, Information put out and also what the party put out. Um, I also saw the uh, Director of Communications for the party, uh, Dr. Hyagba, also, you know, uh, speak to, to this matter. I think he's a fine gentleman. Um, I think that uh, you know it was needed for for the party to rather distance itself from this um, uncouth behaviour of these gentlemen who stormed the the, the studio of, uh, of of UTV. Now, before we start the discussion, let me just, for the purposes of education, read some portions of, if you will, some articles or provisions in the constitution, so that we are well informed before we delve into the conversation now freedom so chapter 12 of the constitution of ghana this is the constitution of ghana this is the 1992 constitution of the of ghana which is the bible for all citizens in this country including the president of the republic of ghana now chapter 12 says freedom and independence of the media so the heading or the title says freedom and independence of the media now if you come down to article 162 of the constitution it says one freedom and independence of the media are hereby guaranteed they say shall will are hereby guaranteed <coughs> now if you read 2 61 clause 2 62 clause 2 i beg your pardon says subject to this constitution and any other law not inconsistent with this constitution so listen to the wording carefully any other law not inconsistent with this constitution there shall shall be no censorship in ghana so do you, can you google the meaning of censorship so that we all understand what the constitution is proffering the constitution in clause 2 of article 162 is clear it says subject to this constitution meaning that unless there's anything contrary in the constitution okay or any other provision which is contrary that one cries even subject to interpretation you know because there are some articles which uh what's it called um uh alters you know, a provision. So there, there's, I'm looking for the legal term, but I just escaped because I'm, you know. But clearly, it says subject to this constitution and any other law, any other law not inconsistent with this constitution. So any other law which is inconsistent with the constitution is null and void. Okay? There shall be no censorship. Please read the definition of censorship. Oh, censorship is suppression or prohibition of any parts of books films news etc that are considered obscene politically unacceptable yes. or a threat to security no censorship so whether there's a threat in your publication yeah it's a publication that leads somebody to sufficiently think that there is sub, there is a threat to national security even if your statement leads somebody to think that there's a threat to national security you can still say it, it of course it's not for you so to see. it's not for anybody to determine how a tv station is run right. so there shall be no censorship that is why i wanted the viewers to understand censorship if you go to threat 
And I'll end the end and I'll leave you guys to <laughs> talk. It says, there shall be no impediment. So, look, please, Google the meaning of impediment for me. There shall be no impediment to the establishment of private press or media. And in particular, there shall be no law requiring any person to obtain license as a prerequisite. So you can never, actually, I, I can sit in my home and just open a TV and radio station. Okay? As a prerequisite to the establishment or operation of a newspaper, journal, or other media for mass communication or information. Editors and publishers of newspapers and other institutions of mass media shall not be subject to control or interference by government, government, nor shall they be penalized or harassed for their editorial opinions and views or the content of their publications. I leave it here. <laughs> so let me start with you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the Constitution has dealt with the matter. First of all, let me greet... The, the Constitution has dealt with the matter. Mm -hmm. But also, the, the matter can be looked at from a perspective which is not just the Constitution. Yeah. Because it, it is, it is mind-boggling, it is crazy, it is stupid, it is backward. Why people will just get up, walk into studios and say, we are representing the political party. The creation of the political party, how did the political party come into being? Uh, that's where I was coming. So yeah. let me use this opportunity to greet the leader and founder of the movement for change, Mr. Alan Chamantin. And I think this man, MFC. Uh, MFC. Uh, are you part of Of course. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> the leading member this of MFC. Is, this, is, this is haram. For you to ask me that I'm not part of <laughs> So, uh, first of all, what took place on Saturday at UTV uh, exposed to certain lapses, first of all, within our media landscape, that is security. And, and I believe that, that the provision of security must not be the responsibility of the media houses. We pay the Ghana Police Service to provide security to all Ghanaians and including non ghanaians in this country. So if thugs or hooligans were able to enter a studio, it shows that our security apparatus are not on top of issues when it comes to intelligence gathering. And that those panelists could have been hurt or injured if they so wished. It means that as I'm sitting here, uh, I have to be looking left, right, center, so that no hooligan <laughs> will enter the studios of Pan Africa and come and then say, attack me. But you can come, still we will say what we will say, because it's not about your threat or whatever that would tear anyone. Kwame, I have listened to the new patriotic party, my former party. Mm. Uh, I listened to the communication director. Mm. I have, this morning, I listened to the youth organizer, national youth organizer, and the national organizer. And <laughs> it's pathetic, and it gladdens my heart that I'm no more a member of that Tagri party. I mean, one of the reasons why some of us left the party is what they exhibited on Saturday. This is akin to the original NPP. I listened to the National Youth Organizer this morning. He says, oh, we are going to talk to the boys. And that, you know, sometimes when they are provoked, they behave in a certain way. And he is, uh, by that, assuming all responsibilities. He is even joking with the issue. This is a criminal matter. And that the Ghana Police Service must listen to the statement that have been issued by Mr. Lanchemat. You didn't read that one. Mr. Alan Chimante has, first of all, condemned what took place, has called on the police and the law enforcement agencies together with the court to fast track the prosecution of these people. Yeah. I mean, we must begin to set Make a, 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 an example of, example of these things. Yeah. Mm. How can you enter a studio and say you are going to alter the content of the program? Did you build that station? <laughs> I 
mean, are you out of your senses to say that, oh, people are speaking against a political party? So what? <laughs> other stations, non, go to Wuntumi station, go to Oman FM. Don't they take other political parties to the cleaners? Then you have the gut to go there that we also want to make an input. And I blame you, the media houses. You have given these two political parties that that leverage to be doing whatever they are doing. They feel that they own the stations. So when you empower uh, 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 an NDC member, there must be an MPP member without uh, and leaving the rest. If you are going to be fair, why is that when you empower NDC, you don't empower CPP, you don't empower all the other smaller parties. But you know Pan African doesn't do that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not referring to you. you give fair representation to all parties. Exactly. Yeah. And here I doff my heart to Pan Africa. Yeah. But I cannot say the same for a lot of so look, I go on several stations. That I was with the MPP. Eh? When I go and criticize the president, I want myself not criticize the president. You are holding my tax and using it anyhow. Abusing state resources. And you say I should come and uh, give you a bouquet. No, I'm not gonna do that. Then when I leave, they will call the producers. Don't allow him to come there again. Then the producers will call me. They say we should allow. I said, are you looking for your content or you are looking for? Uh, do you go to them to go and take your utility bills? If you do, that means they are sponsoring you. Then you can you are liberty not to come because me. I even buy fuel to drive to a place. The time that I'm supposed to work with, I mean, I'm, I'm talking. So it's not even in my interest. Even all the, 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 the kind of sacrifice I have to do, you will be attempt with this. Then they go away. We have given them that power to be doing so. Now, what even annoys me and spoils the matter is the Ministry of Information statement. Did you read it? I read it. Read the, the, the last, last paragraph. paragraph. Yeah, the last paragraph. Yeah. It means the government was in the know. Yeah. Mm. And upon Kuma has disappointed oh, a lot of people sorry. because you for nothing at all. You, you, are, you are a media person and you are a lawyer for that matter. What has A plus been discussing that, that is so inimical to gov uh, government development or governance? If he is alerting you on certain things that are not good, that should even be a plus. You just go and correct those things and you are good to go. And not to go there with young men tax. And they said they are new patriotic party members and you are happy well to those NPP, in fact it helped our movement let me tell you the moment they entered the studios of utv they the, uh, the, the, the movement for change our base increased by a factor of thousand i'm telling you the number of course because you see when mr lanchamante was withdrawing from the race and resigning from the new patriotic party what did he say he asked a simple question how did we get here and how far are we ready to go with this kind of nonsense? You see, it didn't take more than two weeks for him to be vindicated. Now, everything, if you don't agree with anyone, has to be on this tangent. It is bad. Let all shades of opinion speak their minds. If you have yours to you, can go and speak it. At the end of the day, it is Ghanaian. You, you, you make a very important point, Solo, about how the media itself you know, some media houses have conducted themselves yeah. um, in this space yeah. where for some support is given to, for instance, some political parties as opposed to other political yeah. parties. Yeah. Some very respected media houses yes. throwing and wavering support yes. to some political parties no to the detriment of other political parties. And, and that for me is a very crucial point. You see, this oxygen that people have gained over the period in, in, in conducting themselves in these, you know, I call it primeval ways, is because of how the media itself treated other media personalities who were attacked. Exactly. You remember the gentleman who was attacked, I think, in the north? In the north, by the end, he uh, didn't give it oxygen. No, no, no. No media, the media houses simply just, you know, fleetingly discuss the matter. But in so doing, we embolden others. If it were not for if it were not UTV, how would we the have conversation it? would have been different? That is the point. They would have just simply mentioned it. Or, you know, the other big stations would have just simply mentioned it and not have focused their lenses on it. You know, forgetting that it may well come to their doorstep. Well, that's it. You see, there's 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 one there's one clause here. You know, and just so that you can expand the argument, which says that look, one six three. Yes, one six three says that. 
all state-owned media, even state-owned yes. media, shall afford fair opportunities and facilities for the presentation of divergent views and dissenting opinions. That's it. This Occupy Jolobi House, Daily Graphic didn't capture it. No, they won't. Daily Graphic didn't capture it. And we had the occasion to come and sit <coughs> here and ask questions. I said, why is it that that was the most topical issue over the weekend and Daily Graphic, a state-owned institution, did not cover it? No, no, no. I mean, they, they are controlled. So what's the fair representation on that 163 that we are talking about here? There is none. Solo. There is none. You see, and, and that is why every day in India, democracy is going down. Institutions that are supposed to stand up for the ordinary people are, are, are checking it out for fear of victimization. Maybe the director there lobbied and he feels he's, he does not deserve to be there and so he's afraid to touch the government. Look, and yet I will still praise Pan Africa again. Sometimes, you know, when I come on your show, I go back and read all comments. Yeah. Because, you see, the commentary run by those who are sitting in their homes is very important. Yeah. So that you can know where your shortcomings are coming mm -hmm. from. And the number of times I've counted, why did you bring that person and other people to your studio? Yeah. Sometimes it's amazing. Yeah. But it tells you how yeah. strong your station is. Yeah. That you do not care yeah. about empaneling people with different uh, uh, shades of, of opinion. Of course. It's very good. It's very important. It, it, it brands the station very well. Yes. But can you say same of others? Mm. Go there. Front page story. Daily graphic. If it's not the president. It's, it's, it's sad. The vice president. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad. Meanwhile, the Jolobi, the, uh, Jolobi demonstration yeah. touched on the, uh, on the core the death center of the, the, uh, uh, yeah. of the economy. Yeah. 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 The yeah. government, though, I disagreed. Yeah. I told you here yeah. that the method that they were using was not going to lead to any any better outcome. But yes, it is their democratic right. They did that, and you failed to do that. Now, today, see, the front page. This man comes from somewhere in Europe, and he grabbed the front page. Broke beat for Who graphic. told me? Daily graphic. And you say it's the daily graphic of Ghana. We must, uh, you, you know, because every day they distribute to all the, uh, uh, the institutions, so they have regular uh, flow of income. So, Kwame, what has happened is very shameful, and it tells you why mm -hmm. Ghana must not promote the geopoly. You know, in the Northern region, where it was done by the National Democratic Congress, mm -hmm. the UTV one was done by the NPP. Mm -hmm. So, why must Ghanaians continue to repose the confidence of this country into these two little political parties? They care less about the people. See, they are destroying every fiber, moral fiber of society. But let me also caution Kwame A. Plus. In the midst of he defending himself, people have entered the studios afterwards. You are also telling the world that you have tax. Who could beat them? I mean, what sort of society are we building? Hey, you are you are building a militia within within a country? And national security, you are also sitting there. Then we don't have any security. If now people are taking the laws of the land into their own hands to build their own private militia, so that tomorrow when I have an, an issue with him, all he will do is that he will unleash them onto me. Then where lies our security? It is very important at this stage that the national security invites Kwame A plus to show how he built that militia. And also, under no circumstance must those 16 boys, 16 boys who be, think that the, the MPP is in power, be left to go unpunished. Now, to uh, despite media, Kwame, when I, you, I'm invited to this place, whatever happens to me is your responsibility. Absolutely. They must not go and sit down with the MPP and negotiate. If they do so and allow these boys to run away. Me, if they invite me to their studio, I will never go there. Because it means when you go and die, you would have died a stupid death. Let people be punished for, for the actions and inactions. And this thing, the MPP cannot come and tell anybody that they don't know anything about it. The statement from the Ministry of Information, that of the youth organizer, and the national organizer give them out. That it was a planting just, just to destroy the program uh, uh, or the showbiz program. Mm. Who told that showbiz cannot concern politics? The entertainment industry is corruption. You say they are discussing policy. Why must they not discuss politics? Kuma Wood is gone. The, the movie industry is gone. Uh, 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 musicians are suffering. And you say they, they should go and only listen to music or what? Are you okay? So they must treat, despite media, must treat this 
as very, very important. Else, they risk not having any quality panelist. Mm. After the show, I listened to Sonny Badu. Mm. He said he got a wind of information that they were going to be attacked, so he decided not to go. Mm. So you think next time, when he invites Sonny Badu, he will risk and come there? Make sure these people are persecuted. The laws must deal with them, and whether they will be incarcerated, incarcerated or not, that is the uh, matter for the court. Well, thank you very much, Solo. Um, today I may extend a little bit because uh, I'm sure... <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a matter of interest and my time, but uh, I'll try and uh, plead for some more, maybe 15 minutes more, so that we can look at the other issues. But let me come to you, Richter, before I end with uh, Honorable. Um, and again, I deliberately brought into the conversation the Article 163, which specifically deals with state-owned media houses and how state-owned media houses have conducted themselves. I'm a media person. And I don't think we are um, eschewed, you know, from criticisms where necessary, particularly when we are trying to build this our young democracy. And the media, you know, as we all do know, plays a very important role in that process, in that enterprise, in that journey of building a more formidable, unified country called Ghana. And a country which operates on the stills of rule of law on the stills of democracy. Now, what happened in UTV lends credence to the already, you know, uh, maybe, you know, the perception really that this particular administration is an administration that is interested in not upholding the tenet of democracy. And at, at every opportunity, you know, uh, is quick to act in ways which ways are at variance with, you know, advancing the democratic uh, credentials of this country. Sir. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah. Anyway, congratulations. You, are, you will soon be called to the bar. And you know the intimidating presence of the court. When, when you enter the courtroom, you know how intimidating it is, the atmosphere, the presence of the judge and all of that. But why are we here? You have party thugs that could enter a courtroom hmm. yeah, that thing there was, it was take over the courtroom Charlie. Hmm. get the judge out and they walked if you are outside of the court and you even sit on TV and you say something you could be brought into the courtroom and then you face serious um, charges of contempt, contempt. Yeah. 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 and then you if you're not lucky if if the judge on that day slept on the wrong side of the bed may decide that you can go and sleep in for even up to three months oh yes yet people walked into the courtroom mm. with all the security that the court was supposed to have freed their people mm. and got the judge out so, what are we talking about? Hmm. A TV studio is nothing compared to a courtroom situation. Yeah. We've still not forgotten about what happened in Ayawaso. Hmm. The people are working. Nobody was prosecuted. So, it is becoming... You, see, you, are, you are building a culture that people could do things... And once the person wears a political tag, the person can walk. And that mm. nobody can do anything about it. We are talking on matters that border on crime. But until probably we decide that we we'll separate the Attorney General from the Minister of Justice and let's have an independent Attorney General that not a special prosecutor an independent attorney general that will prosecute his own cases, irrespective of the political influence. We may have some of these things coming up. Because who is going to make the decision on prosecuting people for crime? It is the attorney general. It is the state. Because this matter is before the police. The police will conduct all their investigation. They are docked to go to the AG's office for advice. So you don't need 
UTV or despite media to say I'm negotiating. It is the AG that will decide whether or not it is, it is, it is prosecuting a crime. And if the AG is not prosecuting, there's nothing anybody can do about it. Because it is the state versus the, 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 the accused. The public versus the other. So, no, the complainant has little influence on what the AG decides. What are you pushing? The AG is the one person. Is the state that is prosecuting? No, you, 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 someone you has to make a case. You may, yeah, you make a case, but it's the AG that will prosecute. What if they don't make a case? The yeah. AG cannot show me to no, prosecute. One, that's I, a, that's no, the difference. That's no, the challenge. I, I, no, the AC can still prosecute mm. once the police conduct well, investigation. The, it, it has mm. to do with the once. The, but you see, there are video footages. You may not necessarily have to bring in a physical witness. There are video. No, there are video. Come here, you understand what I'm saying? There are footages for which you can show to the court that is, assuming they go to destroy uh, a public, no, assuming they go to destroy a public property and there are video footages and they are being prosecuted. Hmm. Do you need a, wit a physical witness to show the court that this is what has happened? Tell that that video had merited. Hmm. No, you see, there has they, to be a they, witness. No, no, you see, what will the witness say that the video footages? If you, I have CCTV camera in my house that captures what happens in my house and I come and I see you stealing from my house. I may not necessarily have to be in the court. That footage alone, no, let, let that, that footage you. alone should be should be enough mm. to allow for prosecution. I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that even if Despite Media decides that we are pushing for it, somebody will ultimately make the decision on prosecution, and that is Attorney General. Yeah. So if the Attorney General decides I'm not prosecuting this matter, there's nothing anybody else can do. You may make your complaint. You may do all that. You may go to court and file for a nolly press by and come back. You say he's not prosecuted. And he, he owes nobody an explanation as to why he's, he's filing for a nolly press mm -hmm. So, what option have, is, have, is available to UTV can be, can be found in thought, probably, mm -hmm. that UTV may say that people have trespassed on their property and so they, they are going for them in in a private suit mm. for for unauthorized entry and trespass. But when it comes to the criminal prosecution, it lies mm. with the AG. And so probably where the pressure should go is the Attorney General's Department that you can't let this also go. It can't slide. Probably we need to put public pressure on the Attorney General and get him to agree to prosecute. Yeah. Because if he doesn't prosecute, nothing happens. Sure. So, to me, and once the party owns the people, because in all the statements I have listened to, it, the party agrees that these are members, but we didn't sanction it. Mm. You get it? Mm. So, and what was the premise? The premise was from the letter that the party wrote to UTV mm. that Kwame Despite was supposed to have. And I saw him tearing those letters on TV. Why would a political party, and the letter was not signed by the director of communication, it was signed by, I think, yeah, the well, director yeah. of finance or something. And it gives me a hazy thinking that the, the MPP has a structural challenge. Because for a letter going to a media house to be signed, not by a director of communication, but a director for finance. <laughs> this, so why was it that that letter was not signed? In the first place, it was not signed by the director of you communication. You see the director of finance. Well, yeah. but he was not the director of communication. I, I hear it's within the administration. Why is it that it was not signed by the director of communication? Because the relationship between the party and the media houses are supposed to be run mm -hmm. by the person responsible for communication. So if they have issues, even with UTV's content, it's a matter of negotiation and not an outright directive. Mm. Because they could go behind the scenes and discuss that we believe these things could be done this way. And I'm sure every reasonable person would want to listen and then have... But for you to even write a letter which fly straight in the face of con the, the constitution as to censorship and giving yeah. directives yeah. to editors and all Can you imagine? that. It's 
was wrong to start with. Mm. Then the source of the letter, the signatory to the letter, would, would make it appear, which is the case, that there's a structural problem or that some people within the system probably disagreed and some people were using their influence to get the uh, party to bulldoze its way through and get UTV to do what they were doing. It also gives a sense of ownership that the party believes that we own UTV and that we need to give them directive as to what they should do. Because if you don't have that sense of ownership, you, you wouldn't give directives. Because I'm not sure that today the NDC can write a letter to the Want to Meet TV or Movement TV or any other, or even Pan Africa TV that uh, look at your panel. We don't like your panel. We don't like the face of Richard Matthew. So don't bring this down into your studio again. They can only do that when they own or have a sense of ownership of the TV station. So, but we know UTV is a private station. But that sense of ownership, and for which matter they believe that they own the content that the TV station has, gives that rise to a fact that anybody in the party could write to them that, look, we, have, we own you, we have an agreement with you, and you are probably not doing what we want you to do per the agreement. And the fact that the media house came to read, and who read the, the letter? I think it was Bullet who read that letter on the first day. Bullet is not seen as one of their favorites. He's seen as a bulldog. Person, a bulldog, sorry. Who, a person who is, sorry, uh, bulldog, who, who is seen to be opposed to them. Then who came to tell the letter on, uh, it was A+. Plus. So it's like, well, you won't listen to what we are saying. You, we, we wrote to you and you decide to disrespect us. Now we will prove to you that we own you. And so we are coming in to enforce discipline. And so let's mobilize our boys. Let's get them into the studio and let them do what we want them to do. And they didn't take any other time to do it. But when the program was airing live, they entered. And you see the boldness they, they oh. exhibited. They showed their faces openly on set. They were captured. They didn't care because they had that sense of ownership. They feel they own the system. Nobody will come after them. They can do so. And they were committing crime. Mm. But mm. they committed the crime boldly, showed their faces that we'll commit this crime yeah. and nobody can do yeah. anything to yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, in essence, that's what it was. Like, yeah, 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 but you have to be there. Yeah, 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 you get it. Yeah, conclude so, for me, so, let me come to. So it's, 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 it's so worrying yeah, 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 yeah. that when you're building a country and you have young people who are used for such purposes, mm. the kind of culture that you are building is dangerous. Because if they can do this, what would they do in an election time? Yeah. yeah. It is worrying. Honestly, it, it, it all right. Only Thank you. well meaning that it needs to be worried. Question for the gods. Uh Pila to Domi Kwabenya Constituency. Happy belated uh, birthday to our next president uh, of the Republic of Ghana, uh, Dr. Al Haji Mahmoud Baumia. Inshallah, Dr. Beba by Ko Mesa Pila to a selfie, Nana says, MPP parties, party said they are going to break the eight, not knowing it is UTV. Chia. Somebody responds and said, don't make me laugh. <laughs> Johnny Kujo says, good morning, KOD. Listening to Solo this morning, I'm very surprised about his submission. Really, time changes. Solo, just as an MPP on this program, wonder shall never cease. Julie Belinda Obri says, very sad. What is really happening in the country? Hope they will send them to jail. Up till now, no press conference from UTV station. Seriously? Billy Bala, good morning, KOD. Borrowed from Peter Tosh. The mother dog has turned back to bite its master. Julie Belinda comes back again and says, the real hooligans. Mano James says, KOD, please, Mr. Nee should not go far. Just some months ago, when the case between Anas and Kennedy Japan, uh, when Ken was insulting the lawyers of Anas in the court's room, while the judge sat waiting for Ken to finish whatever insult he had. 
before passing judgment. The constitution of Ghana only favors the MPP, not all Ghanaians. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Ben Kenny Bento says, Mama is winning 2024. No haste about it. Okay. Good morning, Pan African TV. I do not agree with the gentleman that it is uh, the AG who should prosecute the intruders. I believe these are individuals who have committed a crime and they must be prosecuted in a court of law. UTV should take them to court, period. Abena Pukua Aka. So there are two types. When they said, if it's a criminal case, it is right within the purview of the AG to prosecute. If it's a civil case, UTV can take them to court. That's why he mentioned tort. Uh, if the matter is a tortious matter, that's a trespass and all those things, then UTV can take them to court. But you can prosecute both cases. Uh, but when you talk about prosecution, it's not, a, it's not a decision. Prosecution is you taking the matter to court. The process of taking the matter to court is what we call prosecution. And that AG, AG is department prosecute. The police, yeah. To, to, no, to, to make a complaint. There has to be a complaint. There has to be a complaint. Yeah. So that one, that one. Yeah, so UTV must first report the matter to the police. police. Yeah. The police will investigate. Yes. The police will put their dockets together. If, you know, they come to the scene, do all those other things. Then they will put their docket together, submit it to AG. Yeah. Then AG can now prosecute the sure. matter in court. So that's how it is exactly. done. Usually, even, uh, uh, depending on uh, the level of the crime, some uh, police officers, I think above the rank of inspector or so, can actually that's also right. go to court and prosecute the matter. So that is, that is what it is. But let me come to you... Um, uh, honorable all right thank you so much um the i like the way you are taking your time and speaking passionately about the subject matter yes sir uh it really uh, shows that you are trying to <laughs> defend your, pro your profession uh, your profession <laughs> i think this matter is a very serious matter i mean it is an issue that we all have to condemn the action is uncivilized is stupidity is out of ignorance and we mustn't allow that to happen in this country let me read for you on the 8th of march this year mm. what his excellency the president nanado dankwa akufado said on press freedom quotes and unquote mm. today we live in a country in which we enjoy complete freedom of expression freedom of association freedom of assembly f assembly freedom of religion freedom of political affiliation indeed freedom of speech has now reached such highs that even members of diplomatic corps feel able to join us in our national discourse yeah this is a statement that was set by the excellency I have quoted in verbatim. Just suppose that with what we are seeing today. Is that the case? Is that what we are seeing? In my candid opinion, if His Excellency, the President, really means what he said on the 8th of March this year, not any other year, then I expect that something some actions will be taken against the perpetrators mm. we all know that freedom of expression is the heart beat of democracy without freedom of expression there's no democracy today we are witnessing situations which suggest that we are we are we are just playing with our democracy and living in a military regime. We are behaving as well. We have witnessed situations where journalists have been arrested, journalists have been prosecuted in this country, and nothing is happening. Now, this year, on the global ranking, Ghana has dropped by two points, from 60 to 62. And the drop, it has been consecutive. We dropped it last year and we, we dropped this year. And all these actions that we are seeing, that no actions are being taken, are what feed into the continuous drop. If care is not taken, then it means that we are going to be backlisted in the coming future. 
this regime we are witnessing, it is not only on the matter of press freedom alone. There is a lot of intimidation. I can assure you that if not for the leaked tape, today we would have had a new IGP. Because so if, once you don't dance into their tune, they come after you. And so the leakage of the IGP tape is what survived him to still continue to be there. Now you go to secondary school. I have a lot of friends who are secondary school teachers. And I can tell you that there are rots that are happening in the secondary school. And they cannot talk. Because when you interact with them, they will tell you that, hey, you dare not alter. If you make a mistake the next day, you lose your job as a headmaster. And several others. You can continue to list them. It's on and on and on. So we are saying that this country doesn't belong to individuals. It's for all of us. And it is the f f um, free the expression of Freedom is what brought this, 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 this particular regime into, 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 into governance. Because you all witness the fact that if you look at the serious demonstrations that they come up, who led them? Is it not His Excellency the President? Who led them? So if it is about press freedom, they should be the ones who are supposed to supervise and ensure that we have better expression of freedom. So I think that this is an action that we all have to look at and condemn. Otherwise, nobody, every panelist will be afraid to visit the studio. Because as we are sitting here, we don't know the next you know, action that will be taken by you know, uncultured people. They can, a group can just come together and then come and sweep this stadium, and all of us will not be at, at peace. So I think it is an action that we all have to take and ensure that these perpetrators are punished. Uh, like we were saying, I think that um, UTV must initiate the action. They must report the case, and then actions should be taken. I want to believe that lawyer and co are there. I believe that when they employ their services, they will go and ensure that the right, thing, the right actions are taken. So let us all try and protect press freedom, because without freedom of expression there's no democracy without freedom of expression then we should stop tanting our you know progress in uh, on the ladder of democracy mm. i rest my case brilliant submission and i think that brings us to a closure i'm grateful but let me read a few messages here um aisha Sumalai, sumaila says good good afternoon well it's afternoon in germany i believe watching you from germany thank you very much um ken williams says, I mean, you look great this morning but it's sad to learn about the attack on uh, UTV by party activists. The only way to prevent attacks on media houses is to stop inviting partisan elements from the two parties because they are only good at polluting the airwaves with uh, rancorous arguments, denials, half-truths, and immoral rationalization of issues uh, to their partisan advantage instead of seeking the national good and interest. Um, this one also, okay, well, I think uh, these are the two messages that I got. Uh, okay, well, uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. I've seen it. Uh, thank you very much um, for your your messages this morning. Let me say a big thank you to you, Honorable Prof, for, for your time this morning. I agree. I, I, I greatly appreciate you, Mr. Thank you very much. Solo, thank you very much. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure coming your way with today's edition of Good Morning Africa. And I think it's important that we must always consistently with our field educate ourselves on the need to be law abiding in this country before you take an action check with the constitution check with the other laws make sure that you are not flouting any of the laws and then you go ahead and do it if you are not flouting any laws but if you know that your actions are within the confines of law or at variance with the provisions or articles of the constitution then you must be minded and guided um, to the media houses listen it must not only be UTV, it must not only be Joy, it must not only be Pan-African TV before we begin to talk about these things. It started from a point we failed to rigorous, rigorously and you know, with vigor condemn these actions and, 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 and omissions. And our omissions, in my estimation, are what has led to uh, you know, the experiences we are, we are encountering now. This is not even 2024. 
So we have to be very, very, very minded. And we have to condemn it in no certain terms. Because in 2024, we may be more critical of government. And who knows what may happen. Uh, to the police, I believe that, uh, I, well, I'm just learning that they've been granted bail. It is their right to be granted bail uh, per the Martin Pebble case. So nobody, uh, you know, you, you have to be granted, even if it is murder, you have to be granted bail, unless, you know, there are some uh, exceptions, exceptions which obviously uh, the court may determine. But clearly, uh, we must pursue this matter. Uh, if they are found culpable, the law must take its course and these people must be dealt with uh, and so that it can, you know, it will serve as a deterrent to persons who are even harboring the thought of wanting to uh, visit mayhem uh, on, you know, presenters and TV stations and media houses. My name is Kwame Usudan, so I rest my case as, as, as Prof always says. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a nice day. God bless. <laughs> Thank you. African. So let's drop Please. it and go. You are going to see. Give me one good reason why the blanket should be dropped. You know, many years ago, I have an issue of a person. And I have to say, you need to do this. Why should not be excited about the law of the trust? So the first one you say, so it's a good reason. The second one is obvious. The third one is obvious. It means that whatever you do is going to punish you. So, so, so give me one, give me two. We are yeah. learning from your instructor. Whatever you do, we are carrying the black ass. No, no. <laughs> let's, let's get this thing What is the problem please. with carrying black ass? Please. please. You make I, carrying black ass okay, look like a, like, like a sin. It's not. This is a democratic society. It's not a sin. Yeah. It's not a sin. So, why can't they carry black ass? It's not a sin. But I am the teacher. Yes. Yeah. This black ass can't No, 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 no. no, no, no. no, no, no. no, no, no.
Then if you if you want that, enjoy. Mm -hmm. This is a small one. But once you said the prisoners, when there is a very large now the student has been set already by parliamentarians carrying placards in the chamber. Mm -hmm. Haven't you seen your parliamentarians carrying placards in the they, chamber? They were stopped. Eh? They were stopped just the same way as you have brought the placards to this point. You have negotiated with you and you dropped it. You see, when the crowd is very large, managing them becomes another issue. But then, like you really said, this is the house of the people. Sometimes you forget. Like you really said, the parliamentarians that has sent a signal that we were carrying placards long and short. Now, fight against colonialism, we are carrying placards. So, respect them. Let's drop it. Because I, I haven't given any good reason why placards should not be carried. That's right. There's no good reason. You remember, I told you that I can't give you a good reason. Because I told you the premise. My boss Give me two reasons. Then we'll be organized as well. So, so please, to... let's drop the placard and go in and get this thing done. She's sorted out. Okay. Your issues will be addressed. It's even being addressed. And the speaker will meet you and give you the assurance. And you'll be free to ask this all the taxes have been imposed for more than six months. And then you, you are going with them. This taxes have been imposed for more than six months. You are going with them. Because the person is you not, know, I can't ask you. It's really difficult to have a discussion with you. Yes. Because you are only an official. Thank you. But the people here, they must understand that they represent the people of this country. This country is going down. Thank you. And they're just sitting here, preventing people from carrying placards. That's all. Thank what you. is that? Thank you. So please. Why is the democracy? Respectfully, let's drop the placard and go and have a discussion. You drop the placards, we'll come back again. Next Thank time, maybe we'll come back with more than placards. <laughs> Maybe we will not get there. We will get there. We, the we, hope we, will get there. we hope not. We hope not. We hope not. We all pray for that. We hope not. We hope not. We hope not. We hope not. No, I mean, we hope it doesn't get to that point. It's got in there already. We are saying that the taxes on sanitary products is discriminatory, it's unjust, and it's immoral, and something must be done about it immediately. We are hoping that by the week or two, we would have positive news, and women and girls in Ghana can rejoice over this victory. We know that this is very important to you, it's dear to you, we have been communicated to, and it's very dear to us. We are presenting to you this petition as a father, as a leader, and we know that you are going to act on it swiftly for us, and women in Ghana will forever be grateful. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. imposing tax on sanitary parts. This is unconscionable. It's a cardinal sin. <laughs> the house shouldn't have allowed it at all. This house shouldn't have allowed it. You know the impact of that law on the human resource development and on the development of this country is immeasurable. That is why I suspended sitting and had to attend to them. I have a copy of the petition and we have to take immediate action to prevent who, whoever is the minister proposing that thing to take it off. The next budget, it must not appear, it cannot be a tax. Please, I take a very serious view on this matter. It was even raised at a forum in Tamar. Why? This parliament has imposed some restrictions on itself. If you look at the concept in our democracy, the option that we've chosen, which is captured in our constitution, the executive is not powerful, more powerful than parliament. It's not. Read it properly. Well, this is self-imposed. We have just handed over all our powers to exactly what the Supreme Court said recently. We gave our authority to the executives to be imposing restrictions during the COVID area. I stated it on the floor here that it was wrong for parliament to legislate and give its responsibility, hand it over, silver platter to the executive. The Supreme Court has ruled saying that was unconstitutional. Why? Why should we do that?
the problem goes beyond removal of taxes. And if you don't tackle it well, it will solve one problem and create another problem. The, the, the example she gave, if the household has 10 cities and they are spending that 10 cities on a daily meal, how much will be left for selling big bags? In that case, even if you remove the taxes, can they still afford? So the core here should not just be a matter of removal of taxes. It's looking at the, at the, at the privilege and see how society can cushion them. And therefore, the advocacy here should not just be limited on the tax. There's a question I want to ask in this conversation. Before the imposition of the recent tax, that has become an issue. What was the usage rate? Has it changed that significantly? And I'm sure it's going to wait. You notice that that problem was still there. However, what has happened is that because of the imposition of additional tax, but has gone up, so many things have gone up, it's made it even more expensive and made it even more difficult for those to go to assess. So it has worsened their situation. I think that if we are tackling the problem, we shouldn't probably only consider the immediate removal because it will not solve the problem entirely. We should think beyond that, especially now that we are introduced, we are trying to introduce a bill and all that. So when you solve a problem, solve it in a way that doesn't bounce back to hurt you. And therefore, in our advocacy, can we advocate for a situation where there is a budget provision to support such an agreement so that if it is local protection, and this agreement can be done. There are several examples that can be cited where we say these are the local producers. For the local production, for every sanitary part we produce, we, we work with you, we calculate the cost, and they are very transparent about their cost. You can look at it. The tax element is this. Without the tax, this is how much the production is sold. We are removing the tax, and therefore we expect it to sell at this price. If that price is still too high for a certain group, how do we cushion that group so that they can still afford? And then that's where the subsidy comes in. And I'm sure if you do this arrangement, you get the products cheaper and much cheaper and solve the problem we are tackling. Rather than making a general statement and say, first of all, we said we're removing taxes on imported, uh, duties on imported sanitary parts, because a lot of the sanitary parts are imported. That's not the solution. Now we moved a bit because I'm sure the advocacy or the point from AGI is giving an indication that that's not the best way to tax. So it, the position has changed slightly, and now they say all taxes. So then it includes the locally produced ones as well. But we are saying that go to another level and say that we are not tackling it at the local level. Let's remove the taxes from the locally produced ones, exempt them from VAT, exempt them from import duties, and let's calculate the reduction we we'll get there and see if that will be enough for the young people to assess. If that is not enough, perhaps another level will have to come in where there will be a subsidy. And all this can be worked out. So why don't you channel our advocacy in that sense? That's why I made the point that India is never against the principle that you are preaching. And so that for that objective you want to achieve, let's approach it in a way that supports the local industries as well. Of the very emotional people about this issue. And we are very proudly emotional. I think that perhaps we are not situating the conversation where it needs to be situated. We are talking about women menstruating. That's what we are talking about. And I can appreciate what the other speaker, my fellow CSO um, from Amnesty said about every month we are menstruating. That's our reality. Yes, I appreciate that local industry holds us. I appreciate that. I appreciate the issue of unemployment. But can we think about unemployment coupled with menstruation that cannot be managed? That's our reality. We live in this country. We appreciate all the nuances, all the issues. Please, let's never underestimate the intelligence of Ghanaian women. We know what the issues are. We are saying that as a people, as a society, as a collective, we should be saying that some things are unquestionable. There are some areas that we need to respect. And humanity is one of those areas. We can tax anything we want. We can solve local industry with any other industry. Let's talk that with the textile industry. Where if I fancy to wear a green cloth today, 
okay, I will. If I want to wear a yellow cloth tomorrow, I will. We're talking about menstruation. That's what we're talking about. And it is not a low hanging fruit. It is not an option. It is not one of those issues that you can come and tell me about local industries. I'm sorry. What are we doing? Where has the AGI been? And please forgive me. Where has the AGI been this whole time when prices for electricity have been skyrocketed? The AGI didn't find fit to tell government about the impact of that on local industry in the country. We are taxing pay, period counts. Suddenly the AGI says, think about local industries. Look at all the things that affect production in this country. Where is the conversation on that one? Where is the conversation? Listen, our advocacy will not stop. Our advocacy is very emotional, and we will insist so we all understand that we need to do right by more than 50% of this population. As NGOs, we work in the local communities to do well. Some of the stories we are not at liberty to repeat. It is shameful. We do not want handouts. That's not what we are asking for. We are not asking for you to buy pads and come and give it to us. We want to menstruate in dignity. We want to menstruate as human beings. That's what we are talking about here. So please, ask for the emotion. I beg you say, you haven't seen anything yet. Because we will keep it advocating until everything, every task goes away. And here, let's add our voice 100% to that of the honorable voice, you know, as he works very hard to get his bail passed. And he has a 100% support in getting that to happen. Thank you. Grants, and we give grants to about five thematic areas that we discovered that women must lead because we didn't want women to be vulnerable. We want women to be able to afford what they need. Yeah. Um, how much do you want to buy a pad? You don't want to buy. How do you get it? How do you get it? You don't want to buy a pad. You don't want to. You don't want to buy. Okay. Like like where I work, for instance, we've done a proposal to the government. Okay. We all don't sit down. We are all working in our individual fields because we are women. My boss is a woman. The owner of where I work is a woman. We've done a proposal. We submitted at where it's supposed to be, the right quarters. We wanted them to tie in the sanitary parts to the free education. It's still work in progress because we've realized that this program that they've brought up, we want the women, the girls to assess it fully. Okay, so we are all working. That's why I'm asking. It's not only about the girls. As a woman, how much do you want to buy the pad? Because you are importing a pad that our exchange, our forest is not doing so good. Even if they waive the taxes on it with the forest, how much would you buy the pad? Okay, and the example that we related with the textiles, we are not seeing that the textiles is the same, on, it, it, it's just something that we were trying to say that it came out before. But what we did was to lobby for it to, be, for it to go zero vatted. So why can't we do the same for the sanitary pad? So it, it's, it, it's not that we are saying that pa, uh, 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 cloth, or the fabrics are essential commodities. You know, if government has been able to do it for that one, how much more sanitary part? Okay, so please, we are situating the conversation where the questions that we were asked, we situated it where it's supposed to be. And we are all together with you. Thank you very much. The sectors are cooking up business, they want to make profits. But also, if we start tackling it as a necessity and not 
a profit-making venture, then we'd have a different conversation. It is not about how much profit. This textile tax we have taken off, trust me, GTP ATL is still expensive than the ones they, 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 they bring this model, though they don't pay back and all that. These are conversations we think AGR should be having. I think after our protest, we had we had banter. I had a banter on Joy. I had on some other videos. This is it. It came up and it became so weird when the women question came up. When it became men, when it was time for us to talk menses. That is when we started talking unemployment. We are taxing parts now. People are still unemployed. We are taxing parts now. People do not have jobs. They are graduates who do not have jobs. We shouldn't limit this conversation to. We can have 50,000 girls stay off school and 10,000 people are employed. What is the ratio? Let's have this conversation frankly. Not for those of us in Accra who are privileged to sit in Alisa Hotel in an air condition. We shouldn't have this conversation because of myself and you. We should have this conversation thinking of the people in people down, 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 down. Even when it gets to five cities, sometimes people can spy. When it's two cities, people can spy. When we presented a petition to the speaker, we, what we, one of the things we suggested was that it should be included in the free SHS, and I'm glad you also said it, in the free SHS policy. We think that women's health has not been a priority to us as a country. And it's time for the conversation to change. But if we want to change the conversation and we start talking about unemployment, it's not like people are employed because we are taxes. We take so much tax, but people are still unemployed. People are migrating from Legon, and they'll still be unemployed. We can continue with the taxes, but people will still be unemployed. Thank you. Thank you. Because she was asking a question, where has ADI been? <laughs> and I was surprised at that question. Based on all the conversation we've had here, and all the explanation you've given, and you're asking where has AGI been. My surprise is, though, my surprise though is that uh, she's never heard AGI talking about electricity prices. When it's a daily, monthly, weekly advocacy we talk about, she's never heard AGI talking about cost of capital. When it's a regular talk we have, our business barometer, we are talking about it. So where has AGI been? AGI has been there all this while. AGI has been talking about all these issues. Are these issues gone? They are not. And every day, as a people, we talk about jobs. So if you saw where has AGI been, AGI is working to create the jobs. So I think that uh, emotions aside, let's understand the issues and approach it and be strategic about it because it's all about strategy as a country. We are not an Right from the very beginning of my, my, my speech, I said, we have a common objective, isn't it? The objective is to reduce the prices for the ladies so they get it cheaper. But getting to that objective, we need to be very strategic. Otherwise, we probably would think that we've gotten to that point and we would not have gotten to that point. And the example she gave, which I reiterated, that the situation even goes beyond removal of taxes than the privileged, whose household income is just 10 cities. Remove all the taxes, then perhaps we should say government should come and set up production plans to produce sanitary parts for free. In that case, it works for everybody. How realistic is that? And therefore, our advocacy, our, 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 our agitation here should be how to support these vulnerable groups, in addition to getting it right for local industry to try. So I think let's put it in the right context. Uh, and, and, and I think in a conversation like this, we are looking more of strategy because the emotions will come and I appreciate it. I said, I have a daughter. I actually have two daughters. I have a wife. And, and they all use sanitary pads. And, and we are in this situation. So let's, let's situation in the, in, the, in the context that helps all of us. Thank you. Bring about a bill that will have the effect of collapsing local businesses. So local businesses are never, or collapsing local businesses are never the target at all when it comes to um, dealing with this issue which is so passionate uh, to me because um, like we've all said, 
I am also married to a beautiful woman who is still menstruating, so we can still make more babies. Uh, I have four beautiful children. Two of them are females. And I actually come after a woman. Um, my eldest sister, I have two sisters, or I have four sisters who are women, obviously. And so the issues of mental, no, the, the issue of menstruation and menstrual health are so key. The, 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 the that we have here is a problem of, is it problem of leadership or the lack of leadership in respect of how to deal with the situation? If Ghana abolishes taxes on parts today, Ghana will not be the first African country to do that. And those countries are still doing well. They have local industries that produce parts. And so it's about where we place the importance. It's about where, where we, does it really matter to us that much that we would really want to do something about it? That is a question. And it's quite sad because when you look at the purpose of taxation generally, is to create a more equal society, remove inequalities. Taxes are meant to bridge gaps, you know, in society. And, and so a tax that identifies a particular sex and that affects only that sex, obviously is not a good tax. If you have a male employed paid 500 Ghana cities, and a lady paid 500 Ghana cities, at the end of the month, that same guy can have sex a thousand times using condoms, and that will not affect his income, his disposable income. But a female has no choice in this. Whether she likes it or not, she's going to menstruate. And she would have to spend part of that disposable income on parts. And so, however you look at the conversation, in the first place, taxation of parts violates Article 17 of the Constitution. Because Article 17 says that we shall all be equal before the law, and no one shall be discriminated against on grounds of gender. Every woman is discriminated against by this tax. When you look at Article 27.3 of the Constitution, it makes it clear that all women shall be guaranteed their rights, the enjoyment of their rights, without any fetter, without any fetter, without any impediment. The right to health by women is fettered, is affected, is tampered with by this tax very, very, very retrogressive. And this tax violates not only our local laws, when you take the UN Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, and you look at the definition of discrimination, there's no better way to put it than what we are doing here today. And the truth is that it gets worse for young female. All the economic conditions that we are describing today affects everyone rich or poor, whether you live in Accra or you live in Bunkurugu Yoyo or wherever you find yourself in this country, it affects everyone. And so the real lead is that we lack leadership on these matters. And that is why we are where we are. And that if we are willing to do something about it, we will be able to do something about it. And now we are taking a step. So tell someone, take a step. Yeah. We need to take a step. And this is exactly what we're doing. And this step is going to take into consideration the concerns of AGI. And I can assure AGI that I, I am willing to accept that invitation, tour all the facilities around, and see what they are doing. In fact, it is the reasons why the purpose of the law, the purpose of the law, are in three folds. One, the valued added tax, the 15% value added tax, is on all products. It's actually not only on imported products. 
both local and imported. So why should government place value-added tax on parts when we don't have a similar tax on condoms? So the value-added tax applies to everyone. So it doesn't discriminate at this point at all. Now, the import duties, the 20% import duties, the essence of the bill, as was suggested earlier, is to reclassify all those import materials, whatever you need for manufacturing of parts, they must all be reclassified to a zero-rated social good. And this is by legislation. If this law passes today, what it means, apart from reclassifying them, is that you are actually introducing a legislative regime that will prevent any future government considering taxing part as an option. No future government must consider taxing part as an option. And we can only achieve that by law. You see, law is a tool for social engineering. And so, if we want to change it, let's change the law. And once you have a law to that effect, that is it. And the reason why we've gone this route is because when you look at Article 108, which provides essentially that a person cannot introduce a bill or a motion unless it is introduced on behalf of the president to impose taxation, otherwise than to reduce the tax. That is why we chose this rule. So that nobody will say that you are now bringing a legislation that is against Article 108. So we are taking away the 15% VAT and then the 20% component. We reclassify it and ensure that AGI get materials to produce this pass at cheap costs for everyone. Now, I know that no Ghanaian woman has ever said that they won't pass for free. At least I haven't heard that yet. In fact, since the creation of Ghana, 1957, we've been buying parts, right? Maybe a different course. Maybe it was uh, 50 pesos. Then he, re he went to some pesos. Then he came out. Uh, so, I mean, the women of Ghana are not lazy. The women of Ghana are hardworking. They are not saying that, look, we don't want to pay anything for parts. What they are saying is that, make it easy for us to assess those, th those parts. And so, if government has any, any sense of empathy, any sense of compassion, I think that this is a time for everyone, right from the presidency, the ministries, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection, all the 40 women in parliament, the leadership of parliament, the whips, everyone must come on board to ensure that this bill is passed so we can give our women some reprieve. So, I want to say a very big thank you to the organizers of this event because, and this is where I know that God is involved in this, in this, in this, in this battle because last week when we were introducing this, uh, uh, initiating this bill, we never knew that there was a planned program like this on the same subject matter. And next week, we are going to be having another stakeholders meeting in Parliament. And we are hoping that the Speaker of Parliament will be there, trying to invite the leadership of Parliament. All CSOs can be there. I think this will be a very good time to start presenting position papers on the matter and giving us the alternatives that we can you know, use to ensure that the bill will come out um, as a bill that will be very, very progressive and that would protect and, and preserve the interests and the rights of women. Thank you very much. God bless you all. And we will invite Loretta Nade Ashi. She is the women's leader of the Socialist Movement of Ghana to give us a purpose of gathering why we are here and why we are having this roundtable discussion on this very important subject matter. Please, a round of applause for her. Makiza, you've already said the purpose. I don't know why you want me to speak again. Um, good morning or good afternoon, comrade. Um, on the 22nd of June, we were on the streets of Accra. Young women, young men were on the streets of Accra to present a petition to parliament. Um, fortunately, when we went, we met the speaker of parliament. And he said, before the taxes on red were unquestionable, unquestionable sin, and promised us that 
by the mid-year review, there will be conversations around it. A lot of time went by, a lot of work went on. We gathered one morning to go listen to our honorable speaker, our, our honorable finance minister, and we were so happy or we were happy that morning because we thought really girls and women were going to laugh and smile because taxes were going to be taken. Then we can channel the conversation to a different level. We went and nothing was said about it. Fast forward, we woke up this very Monday and saw in the news that there is a bill to be introduced to parliament on the removal of the 15% tax. We are all happy about it. It's news. We, we don't know the details. And so we thought, why don't we invite the person going to do this introduction to parliament to come and explain to us because yes we want the taxes removed but you would have to understand what it says sometimes what most of the time what happens is that the english is long so some we don't get to read everything so we 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 rally around things and think that it favors us and we treat ourselves in the foot um we've we've had a lot of conversations we believe that Everybody who is here in this room today is here not because your mother is a woman. It's, not, it's here not because you have sisters. It's here because you think that tax is unjust and discriminate. It renders a certain percentage of the population poorer. That is why we are gathered here. We have to make this a conversation. We have to talk about it. That's the main reason for gathering here. Thank you. Thank you very kindly, Loretta Nade, as she is the women's leader of the socialist movement of Ghana. Please do it one more time for her. I mean, half of the times when we have this conversation, it is sometimes restricted to only women and young girls. But we cannot re-emphasize how much this uh, is our collective humanity. It's about all of us. It should be a national discussion. We should push forward so that this very you know inhumane act which is taxes being levied on menstrual hygiene products which are supposed to be essential health products are taking away as i said earlier do not tax our period at this very juncture uh we would like to call upon the executive director of the obasima summit foundation she's in the person of mame amaprat my very own boss to give us some background information on don't tax my period piece which i together for here good afternoon good afternoon please let's clap for ourselves <laughs> we've come this far we have we have it's been a long can i even call it a journey it's 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 more than that of everybody that did here all of us here doing different things in our big capacities and in our small capacities to get us here right now. I know that all the organizations here have in one way or the other been championing for this, advocating for this. Long before, I, I, I of course, the biggest congratulations goes to the Honorable um, Francis Sosu for taking this on the way that he has. Because if he is successful, then we are successful, you know, because at the end of the day, all of our individual advocacies was sort of, um, you know what I'm saying, right? Sorry, give me the word. <laughs> Thank you. That. <laughs> right? Everything that we've been doing over the month was so that we get here, so that that one organ or institution of state that is vested with the power to be able to take taxes off and put taxes on does rise by the Ghanaian woman. And so today, the fact that we are here coming to listen to the Honorable explain to us, I mean, in detail, what this bill means or what it would mean for me, for you, for every girl, for every girl that is even unborn, it's important that we appreciate that it is our collective advocacy that has brought us here. But we also need to appreciate that it's now that we're actually going to take the step. A bill is still only a bill. 
until it is passed. And so this is for me where the work be begins. And so I dare say that after today, when we have listened to Honorable and we have asked him all our questions, he has explained to our satisfaction. Perhaps the time that we take off our Obasima t-shirt and my companion t-shirt and girl guy t-shirt and wear one t-shirt. That is a coalition that is only interested in supporting this bill and making sure that the taxes go away. So, I mean, we are here. Congratulations to us. But the work begins. Thank you. Let me invite the very honorable uh, Francis Xavier so, so member of parliament for the Medina constituency who is leading this pack to help us or run us through this bill and what it means for all of us please a round of applause for him thank you very much um, yeah thank you very much uh, let me also add my voice to say a big congratulations to all progressives who are gathered here and who over the years have been working so hard to give a voice to this campaign. Let me quickly confess that until this year, I never got to know about this campaign. So you can imagine, I mean, I like to work in the human rights space. I like to advocate and push for the rights of women, but for, Every time I develop a course and I try to dedicate myself to that course until the course is over. So most often than not, I get so busy with courses that I don't hear what is happening around me. So the whole of this year, honestly, even when there was demonstration in parliament, I never knew because I was working on the abolition of death penalty. I was working on criminalization of witchcraft accusation and I needed to keep my focus and make sure that I get the right people, the right connections within parliament, the right lobbying, um, getting everyone, you know, use a non-partisan approach to ensure that the bills get passed and not only get them passed, but also get the buying of the presidency to sign those bills. And so whilst I was, heavily engaged with these bills. There were a lot of advocacy going on apparently around that I never knew. And so it was after the media budget review that I began to see some stories in respect of taxation of parts. And it was so weird to me because I felt, why would you want to tax part? In fact, so that made me develop interest in the whole conversation about, it made me develop interest in the whole conversation about taxation of parts. Um, in, in doing so, I quickly went online to check what people have been doing in respect of this. And I was so shocked to realize that there has been so much advocacy. People have been doing so much in that space to ensure that we, we put an end to taxation of parts. But to my surprise, I realized that most of what was ongoing was either the media advocacy, the demonstrations, and um, what I would say are the normal courses but I never saw any major step forward. And learning from the lessons from the witch camp issue, because the problem has been with us for over 100 years. And every year people die, women die, and nothing gets done. And learning from the um, abolition of death penalty, I realized that there was an leading some bills should clearly that anytime okay, so there is a saying that if you want to go far you go in a group but if you want to go fast you go alone because sometimes 
depend on the nature of what you want to stand for and the agency around. If you are going to take time, now that we are on recess, you are going to take time to now go to call people one-on-one. -on -one. People have traveled, committees are busy. Before you start the work, it's going to be very difficult. So take the step and still rally people behind the step. And that was what motivated me to uh, tender in that uh, proposal for abolishing of the 15% VAT, as well as reclassification of all the import duties and reclassify the product itself, sanitary part product itself, reclassify them as essential uh, social goods, which are zero rated. Because up until recently, when I was doing my research, I realized that somewhere in 2012, there was a harmonized classification of all products, actually, particularly imported products. And through the harmonization process, there was some ECOWAS level and international level of uh, classifying products. Unfortunately for us, sanitary parts product found itself as part of those products that were classified as luxury goods. And so when that classification was done in 2012, I realized that the then government approach to dealing with the issue, particularly with respect to vulnerable people, was to institute um, a policy on what they call free parts. And so they used to send their free parts to various senior high schools and basic schools and so on and so forth. But then, because the whole conversation got lost in a political space, the then opposition then said that the free parts that were being distributed were being used to collect blood of young female for juju and all those kinds of things, and then promised to abolish the taxes on parts when they come to office. Eventually, I don't know what became of the free part project, but I think it, was, it, was, it became so unpopular that government at a point abandoned it. But fast forward, in 2017, after the new government had taken over and had promised in their manifesto to actually take away the taxes on parts. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And in 2020, it was repeated. And now in 2020, both parties were now promising that if I win, I will take away the parts. And the other one, so if I win, I'll take away the parts. So there was now a political convergence. Unfortunately, 2021, it didn't happen. And the prices of parts, if you compare the prices of parts in 2012, when we first had it, it became absolutely necessary that we do something about this because I was looking at the whole thing from a pure human rights perspective because that is where my strength is. Because in the first place, tax administration policies are supposed to bridge inequalities in society. So if you look at the original intention of taxation, you pick a letter from the rich so you can redistribute it so that the poor will also benefit. So that is the essence of taxation. You don't bring a tax handle that, that deepens inequality. And I'm saying that this tax handle deepens inequality because it discriminates against women. It is a tax that is paid only by women. Men do not pay this tax. When you take Article 17 of our Constitution, Article 17 one says that we shall all be equal before the law. So equality before the law. Whether male or female, we are equal before the law. Article 17 two says that no person shall be discriminated against on grounds of gender and others. But I think for our purposes, gender, on grounds of gender. When you look at how this tax is handled. If you have two young people, students who have completed school, one female, one male, who began work and maybe are paid 1,000 CDs every month, the guy at the end of the day would have the 1,000 CDs as his disposable income. The woman would not because by virtue of her, her makeup as a woman, she doesn't even need to plan for it. 
you don't plan for your menses. You don't plan for your cycle. It will come when it has to come because it's natural. So by that, the disposable income available to women at the end of the month is much lower compared to that of men. Then secondly, you have other reproductive products such as condoms, which under the same classification is zero rated. And these taxes are not on condoms. But the taxes are on sanitary parts. That again is discriminatory. Now, when you move further, we have the UN Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. This tax violates that convention, even though Ghana is a signatory to that convention. And when you are a signatory to a convention like the CEDA, which is the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, whether you have taken steps to ratify that in your country or not, there is what we call the Pacta Sub Servanda. You, you, you are under international obligation not to implement laws that violate the intent or the purpose of those laws that you have signed. Again, the, 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 the tax handle violates the Sustainable Development Goal 1, Goal 2, Goal 3, Goal 5. And all of them are things that further worsen the condition of women. And so it looks like, as a country, we are not ready to take the bull by the horn, intervene, and, and, and reduce the burden on women. I'll be preaching to the converted if I were to talk about the kind of difficulties women go through during their menses. I mean, if you are a married man or you are single with a girlfriend and you all know, I mean, you know, the cramps, the, 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 emo the, the, the mood swings, the emotional instability, the pain. Some who are heavy bleeders who have to be home for sometime several days before they can actually do anything. So it affects their productivity. It's already a burden for them to manage the situation. The least a nation which is sensitive to the plight of women should do is to tax parts. Unfortunately, that is where we are. And that is why we all have a solemn duty to ensure that these taxes are removed. The question is how. The how, this is the starting point. The proposal that I put before the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana last week. And this proposal sought to do three things. One, removal of the valued added tax on parts and sanitary products. The value added tax, that's 15%. Now, when you do a computation of all the tax handles or the taxes on sanitary products generally, when you put them together, it's close to 66% of tax that we pay. But it comes in different forms depending on whether the product is being imported or is being manufactured locally. Currently, the breakdown of menstrual hygiene products are get fund 2.5% VAT, 2.5%. Uh, uh, they have 15% VAT and they have NHRL 2.5. These are the, the, the VAT provisions that affect part currently. And the object of this VAT bill is to amend the Value Added Tax uh, Act 870 to provide for exemptions on the supply of sanitary parts and tampons, napkins, napkin liners, or for babies and similar articles or any other material and exempt raw materials supplied locally for local production of these goods. So the value added tax, as you see, if you're able to carry this amendment, not only are we removing the VAT from the finished product, we are also removing VAT from uh, any raw materials that may be required for manufacturing of, you know, uh, 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 the manufacturing of um, uh, pads and tampons and baby knives. So, so honestly, we are doing a major intervention for women cross board and across the country.
That's, 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 that's what we are doing with this law. It's just a major intervention across the country using this, 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 this law. And so that is what the VAT amendment is going to achieve once it's carried. And so when you look at the act itself, the draft act itself, um, it says that the principal enactment is amended by the addition of the following. So we are amending the schedule, the schedule to the VAT Act that prescribe what articles are exempt. And in, in amending that, we now include all the things as exempt articles. And we have the sanitary towels and parts, the tampons, the nappings, the napping liners for babies, the similar articles and any other material. And then, uh, and then it says uh, uh, in continuous part, for adults use. So that's the kind of intervention. And then all the materials that are needed for their manufacturing. So this also technically answers the concerns of AGI. Because AGI is out there and I've told them that they don't need to worry. Maybe they are misunderstanding the advocacy because this advocacy is actually also removing the same VAT that they always pay on uh, uh raw materials that they use to manufacture parts and what actually that means is that local manufacturers can also compete competitively because you are now getting these raw materials at very cheaper prices so when you produce them you can sell them at cheaper prices and so the goal no woman in ghana has said that we don't want to pay anything for part i said that we don't want to pay astronomical fees for parts and that's exactly what they've said and so that is what the VAT amendment is going to do. Then the second bill that has come out of this proposal is the Customs Amendment Bill 2023. Um, and it's quite interesting because it looks like the Socialist Forum is the first forum where we are discussing, you know, these proposals because nobody ever knows where we have gotten to with this. So I'm happy that I'm doing this here because Amaprat, Honorable Amaprat, is a very solid. <laughs> is a solid um, um, advocate in this area. Now, the object of the Customs Amendment Bill 2023 is to amend the Customs Act 2015, Act 891, to provide for exemptions on importation of sanitary parts and tampons, nappings and nappin liners for babies, and similar articles, and any material or raw material imported solely for the production of sanitary towel and uh, tampons, nappings, nappin liners for babies and similar articles. Now, this object is so critical because beyond removal of the VAT, we are now moving further to remove the custom taxes. So the two combined together is going to drastically reduce the price of, I mean, parts baby nappings and all the things that we use for the most vulnerable. And the most important aspect of this too is that the, the bills, the proposals, then goes further to reclassify these articles as zero-rated social goods. So you cannot ask them, not now, not in the future. Thank you very much, Frederick. I think what now, ask has something later to do with Frederick also about success rate, whether how it can, uh, how successful can we be? I think that, um, you know, the parliament is a house of interests. And um, I believe that there are two kind of people always. There are those who are very optimistic and some can be very pessimistic in respect of anything that can be for parliament. Now, the, the optimist sees problems, I mean, he sees opportunities in problems, right? And then the, the pessimist sometimes sees problems even in opportunities. And so my approach, sorry, my approach generally has always been to be extremely optimistic. In fact, I try to be optimistic even against the odds. Because I recall when I, uh, when I be began the process of the death penalty, for example, there were many who said it won't work. We can't abolish the penalty in Ghana. 
and um, the, the 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 back room and the back door diplomacy that makes some of these courses work. Uh, uh, they are they. I mean, they, some of them you cannot even discuss them fully and openly, but it comes with some tact. But I can assure you that for a bill like this, given what we did with death penalty, if a death penalty did not have this level of national engagement, people, we didn't have like, I mean, I, I, it became like a solo thing until it eventually was abol abolished. Not many people were really interested in the conversation, right? But this one, a bill is introduced in one week. This is like the third or the fourth stakeholder engagement I'm attending telling you how important this bill is and how people are willing to come on board. And so I think that in every public policy making, there will always be competing interests, government interests, private interests, and all that. But what drives public policy is advocacy. And so if all women and all girls who are on Twitter, TikTok, um, Facebook, use their social media network to say that if you are a politician, if you do not get this bill passed, all of us, we want to know the position of every single member of parliament. Because every MP has something to do with a woman. If you are a man, you definitely have a girlfriend, you have a wife, you may have side chicks, you may have so so we know and you you cannot pretend you don't know this matter and so it's about us giving the loudest voice to the advocacy it would work because i never saw this level of activism with death penalty i never even saw it with witchcraft accusation i traveled to the north to witch camps and we saw women in very deplorable situations we made noise about them but we didn't have this level of engagement so for the fact that in less than two weeks, we have this level of engagement already, I can assure you that nothing will stand in the gap for this bill passing. And already I've had, I've, I, I threw an open invitation to every member of parliament to join. It will be beautiful that all 275 MPs will want to be a signatory to this bill. It will be beautiful that all 40 women in parliament want to say, I want my name to be part of this bill so that posterity will know that when the initiation or when the initiative began in parliament, I added my name to people who said we shouldn't tax parts. And, and so every person here can be a voice to this and call your MP to call another MP. to call another. We want to see your name on the bill. We want to see your name on the bill. Because at this stage, we can just do a memo to parliament and list all the people who want their name to be on the bill and it to be added to the, the the list of people whose names are on the bill so we will all know and, and and appreciate that look there is a collective desire to change the the the, the narrative so i think that um it will pass by god's grace uh the president's consent the president has seven days within which to sign a bill when it's sent to him if he doesn't sign he's supposed to refer the bill back to parliament to um with explanations and when the bill comes to parliament parliament can reject what the president is saying and by two-thirds majority parliament can uh assent the bill for it to become law so if all of us go out there and say look all the two seven uh, two seven five mps right if we don't see you actively making this happen you won't go back to parliament i mean that is a i mean it's it's a, it's a tool right it's a political tool yes you can hold your balls like that and keep squeezing it and keep squeezing it and keep sque we haven't heard your position on this bill yet we want to hear your position please can you do a press conference can we see the women caucus do press conference can we see the majority leadership do press conference because you want our vote again you want our vote remove taxes on that and guess what in every constituency women are the majority anyway if all women decide to vote against you even with the vote of the men you can pass and so maybe we don't appreciate the power we are having here, the power in organization, the power of advocacy. If we appreciate it, you wouldn't even ask the question whether the president will be willing 
to sign. In the president say, I won't sign. And all women in Ghana decide that we will now occupy the Jubilee House. Or is it a Jubilee House? Or which I, I don't know. How do you even call it now? I'm, I'm even confused. All women say, all women go in. Look, I mean, it will happen. So let's not underestimate like the power that we have as advocates and people who can make this happen. So I think I've answered Frederick's question. Uh, the suggestion is fantastic from uh, Ibote, right, Eve? Yes, yeah, so I think that that is something I'm going to quickly run by the technical committee that is uh, finalizing the draft to see the possibility because, you know, one of the, I, I introduced 11, there's 11 private members bills that have introduced. And one of the bills has to do with climate change and climate action and rights to clean air. And so in that spirit, I think that introducing um, um, a clause that says that maybe for people who may be important for like um, climate, um, how do you even call it? Like the climate friendly, if, you, if the importation eco-friendly like parts, if the eco-friendly parts up to some level will receive further you know, and, and uh, in this bill, that would be really great because then not only are we achieving uh, abolishing and all that, we are also being climate sensitive with these bills. I think that is a great, great addition. And I'm going to just, right from here, I'm going to run it by them and let's see whether we can come up with a quick research and come up with a clause that may deal with that, you know, both for the VAT and, 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 and for the, uh, uh, the imports that we're going to be doing yeah and so the third one has to do with the um yeah so i think yeah the concerns you raise about the local companies i think they are well very well noted but let me add that since the bill was advertised um at least some female mps have already reached out and say you know we want to be part of any all the engagement because this one was on a short notice we couldn't reach out to some of them but i'm sure that when we do the major stakeholder engagement either in parliament or any other uh, forum that we may be the next time I'm sure a lot of them will be there to support the bill and then the uh is it the widespread nature of how did i write this one nah okay i think i asked na nice question which one they oh yeah after so the blockade is what i've not answered yeah so i think that the, the blockades are going to be very normal um uh, political uh nuances you know my 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 typical leadership goal is to always have people as my goal and use selfless leadership as my means and anytime i do that the result has always been impact and the impact my goal is not to be like the champion of this this my goal is for the work to be done in fact i, I recall that when we began with the witchcraft bill, I went around trying to get everybody on board so we can all be passed so it will go fast. Uh, I had several people who were on the list, but when we had to move forward, people were not moving. So I had to remove people, remove people. At the end of the day, we were only five that were left that finished. The death penalty is the same. People were saying, oh, it will not happen. Why do you want to take the penalty? So when I went round, 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 I didn't get anybody. So I became the sole sponsor. And we've, we've passed two major legislation that have abolished the penalty. And so when it happens like that, sometimes people needlessly feel threatened politically. I am not interested in any other poli body's political position. All I'm interested in is let's create impact today because we have only today. Maybe tomorrow I'll be no more. But I wish that tomorrow if I'm no more, everybody will say that ah, this guy, he was thinking about everybody and he brought this thing, you know, for the purpose of the society. If we think about impact on a daily basis, we can make greater impact unfortunately not everybody um in parliament may be thinking the same you know and and that's quite unfortunate but that is where i have the extra duty to let everybody understand that look you know what this is ours it's not mine in fact every idea even whether it's from the presidency from an individual comes to parliament as one person's idea but when the speaker admits it it becomes an idea of the collective when it's referred to the committee, for example, this will be referred to gender committee, including maybe the health committee, maybe finance committee, because they may have to have 
input in those things. When the committee finishes its work and brings it back to parliament, it becomes a committee's report. It's no more even the sponsor. It becomes a committee's work. And it's a committee that will lead the way to present the report. And it's a committee that will now defend the position that has been canvassed. And when it goes through and you pass through the voting stages and the speaker puts the question and it passes, it becomes an act of parliament. So the, the biggest duty is to work around everybody to let them know that, look, you know what? This has something to do with self-glorification. You know, let's just go ahead and let's make this happen. It's, it's something that we might be passionate about. It's about our women. It's about our girls. As we continue to do this, people are still menstruating, right? Yeah. Others are menstruating today. Tomorrow, some will menstruate and you'll continue. And so people are still struggling. So let us all see the agency rather than see it as a political contest. It's not a political contest. It has nothing to do with politics. It's a social problem that we are seeking to address. And so I see those things as some of those political nuances. I saw it with the death penalty at a point in time when I was leading the people on the floor who were campaigning against it. I said, well, don't vote for it. Don't vote for it. Don't vote for it. And that kind of thing. But I believe that there is also a God that sees our heart and knows our purpose. And once we commit to him and, and he knows where we are going, there is no way this will not pass. I believe that when the question is pushed today in parliament, whether or not majority of MPs want this taxes removed, we are going to get overwhelming majority that will ensure that these taxes are removed. So, yes, those, those I mean, they will come by, we'll be fine. Yeah, those challenges will come, but we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah, thank you. Friend stories um, to share on the advocacy and the journey and how far we've come. Um, we can talk about almost all the things we've done, trying to engage women in parliament. I believe if I go through the speaker's letters, he has petitions, uh, strong petitions. If the women leader in parliament should go through her mail, she would see a lot of um, letters from my association, even the 40 women in parliament. We have engaged almost a lot of people and the, for me, it's always been political and party lines. So how are you as an MP in opposition looking to bring all the different political parties and the political colors um, to rally this bill? That's one. Two, we've heard so many disheartening stories. MPs who have actually said, um, anybody who is advocating for the removal of the taxes is causing disaffection and disfavor for government. But then we all know this is not a gendered conversation. This is a human rights situation that you've mentioned. So um, how are you looking to bring different CSOs? This, you will get a lot of CSO support, but then the powers that be, how are you looking to bring everybody to the table? And then finally, as organizations who have been advocating for so long, um, I believe, and I think that was the first thing I asked yesterday when this invitation came. When I saw the headline, I shook my head because um, for us, the advocacy is zero taxes. But then from your explanation, when we start with the 15%, which is the VAT, all other taxes, some way, somehow get removed. And I think that's the best way to approach it. We have different coalitions, and this is not about one organization. So, Talking on behalf of the coalition that we have actually put together, we would want to have copies of the bill so that we can also read through it and then make uh, contributions because we have tax experts, we have social advocates who serve, and we have members of parliament, actually, the Honorable Abla Jifa Gomoshi is a staunch supporter of what we've been doing. We've worked in her constituency, we've worked with her, and every time she has had the opportunity in parliament, she actually says the work that we're doing. So we don't have a copy of whatever you're presenting to enable us to make input. I believe that every CSO sitting here would want to also make input. For me, I've always said it's not about one organization. It's a collective. So my two questions, how are you rallying and avoiding the political? Uh, it's not even, this is a political issue actually. But then how are you trying to work around the party politics? Because the reference you made in 2012, it was an election year. I remember that issue very well. It became part for blood or part for rituals. It became a headline. 
And as a result of that, that initiative was dropped. For those of us who work with a lot of rural girls, the removal of the taxes does not really benefit them. Because at the end of the day, if a family's income is about 12 cities, 15 cities, that can feed about six people, the family won't prioritize buying sanitary pad for the girl. So we need to actually look at all these things before we put something down that also goes to make some people's lives comfortable at the expense of the others. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So the very first one, um, uh, the name again, I think. Kampala. Kampala, okay. Yeah, he, the first question had to do with how did the bill, how did it even get to parliament? Honestly, if you ask me, I don't even know. You know, so I think that beyond the classification of the taxation that I know in 2012, there has been consistent, once you have classified your laws and it's become part of your um, customs, you know, laws, that's way back in 2012. What it means is that until you repeal or you reclassify the product, you would have a duty every year to want to put some rates on it, either on the raw materials that are being imported or on the finished goods. And that is what has continued. And so the, the political parties' positions have been, oh, we are going to work to, you know, remove it. Remover would then mean what we are doing now, reclassifying them. But the only time you may not tax them is when you reclassify those products that they are zero rated social goods. But that reclassification is what has taken us forever to do. And that is why we are using this law, you know, to do that. And I think the advocacy became intense because of the astronomical prices of parts today. And secondly, also because um, all that we have gone through as a country, the economic hardship, um, um, the issues of COVID, you know, we, there's a more, I mean, there's a deepened inequality in our society. I mean, the poverty levels have gone much deeper. And so uh, people are agitated generally that you have to buy part at this cost. And so it, it naturally sparks the agitation. And once that is a current social uh, uh, move or that is a mood of the society and that is a, the, the social current, every policy proposal in that line is likely to pass because that is a social current. Nothing will be able to stand against the current. You know? So I think that's why we are taking advantage uh, of, of the current that is available now. And then Blaze was asking um, the need to keep the campaign in focus. And I think I agree. Um, in fact, the suggestion I made is not, is not to actually uh, take our focus of it and to now go and do like new research and all that. I am thinking that um, a statement in the bill that may just suggest that we are actually asking for an eco-friendly part would not be a bad idea, particularly in the spirit of the climate action that are around. In fact, people may even comment the bill more and say, look, the bill is not only achieving all these things, so it, it, has a, it, it will achieve this soon too. So we'll look at it. If it won't work, I can assure you that we'll be the first person to let it go because I really want to make sure that we keep this focus in focus so that we don't, if it won't work, that we won't let it, we won't force it. Uh, but we'll just, we'll, we'll just consider and see how it works. I think the second uh, concern is, is so key. And I would beg that we all commit ourselves to this because organization is everything. And so I believe that it is because of the massive protest that you went on that actually gave this bill the kind of attention it has. Because like I said, I have 11 private members' bills. Why is it that all the bills are not trending as this bill? For example, I have a bill to, like for children, cancer in children and tumor in children. But it's, it hasn't been made an advocacy point. So it hasn't gotten, you know, I have a bill to put mental health conditions on the NHIS, but it hasn't had any huge backing. I have a bill on 5% employment of persons with disabilities, but it hasn't had any 
So this is so unique because there is already some fire, some advocacy ongoing. And I think that until we all see this bill passed, the advocacy must not stop. It must continue. If it's a monthly protest, if it's a monthly vigil, is whatever, you know, we don't tax my part, take away the tax, and we just have to find ways of, you know, coming together. And I like the fact that um, uh, Ellie mentioned uh, the issue of even the different coalitions that exist. And I believe that sometimes if we work in isolation, it makes the work a bit started. So if we bring all our coalitions together and we say, look, we are by working together saying that we are forming a coalition against taxation of parks. So all of us, Shraj, all of us who have been talking against taxation of part, let's all sing one hymn. So when we have like a one hashtag for a week, everybody's on that hashtag. When we have like a tag for, and we all work together as like one coalition against taxation. And when we declare that we are all going to parliament with like petitions, or we are going to parliament with, say we are all marching to parliament and everybody brings their own coalition and all of them gather together, it becomes a bigger force, you know, that would push this through. So. Uh, I really, really appreciate uh, the input and then the suggestions that have come so far. And then I think the, the very critical one that you asked with uh, how to make this work a nonpartisan work. In fact, it's been my one of my approaches. And so I, I deliberately do that because I feel as young people, we must all help to change the narrative of leadership in our country. And if we are going to change the narrative of leadership in our country, one of the key things I believe we might begin to do is to remain very political because we are political people, but be nonpartisan when it comes to issues that affect the generality of our people. So that when it comes to the development, social intervention, why must we be partisan about them? Water. Why must we be partisan about provision of water? Why must we be partisan about provision of drugs? Why must we be partisan about issues that affect women? I mean, every woman belongs to one political party or one political persuasion or the other. And those who menstruate, everybody menstruates anyway. So the cause we are standing for already, is the, the cause itself is nonpartisan. And I think that we must remain in that space. And that is why we are not making this conversation uh, 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 oh, is the government or is the MPP government that is burdening Ghanaians or is the NDC government that first established there? So anywhere people want to dra 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 drag me into that, I always avoid it. Is that, hey, this tax, so who was the first person who introduced the tax? Was it not the NDC people who brought the tax? And then, then what? You see, once the cost gets lost in politics, it doesn't achieve its goal. And that was what I did with witchcraft accusation. That's what I did with death penalty. It is what I'm doing with all the other courses, making them understand that, look, this is not about a political party. It is not about a political interest. It is not about which political party takes a bigger interest. After all, take the biggest credit. After all, the one initiating is an opposition MP. The one who would assent to we is the president of the D. So, I mean, it's not a credit. Like, it means that it's a bipartisan approach to dealing with a problem. And so to that extent, I think that one of the things that the coalition can do also to send petitions to the presidency and seek audience with the presidency. You can imagine if all the coalition, I think the coalition will have to actually work to actually bring in our religious actors. If the national chief imam, the president of the Catholic Bishops Conference, the Archbishop of, um, Archbishop Duncan William, Archbishop um, uh, Ajin Asari and all the other religious actors come on board and say that, oh, we all want to visit the president. President, we want to come and register our displeasure with this. And we've heard that uh, there is a, a position now in parliament. We need you to support it. It will get them to move. Like the queen mothers, the market queens, we get all of them on board, it would move. Because then it, it's becoming a bipartisan approach, passing the legislation. So I think that is exactly what we'll be doing with this one. Thank you government and parliament to actually pass this bill and this is really the first step forward into making this a success 
Um, for me, my advocacy in um, menstrual hygiene period poverty started about three years ago. And um, it's been something that has been key to my foundation's work. And um, we've been on the ground. We've gone to so many places, so many schools. And we have actually also adopted um, schools, um, specific girls in specific schools where we are supporting them with um, sanitary pads for an entire year just to make sure that they are able to 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 stay in school and take advantage of their lessons and what they're learning in school for us um, getting support here in ghana has been one of our major challenges and um, talking about this one year project that we are doing it's actually a support bait we are able to do it because of a support of a uh, sanitary pad company, manufacturing company in the UK. And they are supporting us with thousands of pads to be able to do this. Um, for me, I was just telling Ama, if this bill moves forward, we also have to ensure that the local brands on the market are also a part of this bill. Because if there's a reduction in um, the import taxes for them, they are the major beneficiaries of this um, uh, bill. So there has to be that conversation where it's like, okay, if we are if we are successful in making this happen, you are going to reduce your prices to a certain level where at least every average girl in Ghana, be it in the village, be it it's in the city, they are able to afford uh, a sanitary pad on a regular basis. I'm fully behind this bill. I am available to support in any way I can. Um, I hope I because I came uh, uh, late. I don't know if there was the talk about the strategy on how we are actually going to push this bill. I mentioned fourth uh, of October. I believe there's going to be a debate in Parliament. What are we doing towards that fourth of um, October? How are we um, putting the narrative more out there? How are we pushing it? How are we making it louder for the media to actually speak to 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 this bill? And then when it comes to the fourth of November, uh, October, how are we going to be there? I mean, I would love to show up, uh, make sure we are pushing, at, putting as much pressure on our parliamentarians as possible for them to see that we are very serious about this. And um, anything that we have to do, as I mentioned, I'm available to do that. So yeah, thank you. Um, good morning to you all. My name is Catherine Morton. Um, I represent an organization called Eve International. We are a women's group in Ghana. I would like to commend you, Honorable, um, for this initiative. Um, for me, it's funny that um, we don't see any of our female MPs here today. And I would highly say that uh, we are grateful that you are a female champion. We need more of such people in our society uh, because for us to break the gender um, gap, we need female champions um, to fight for us. So thank you very much um, for bringing this up and proposing this bill. Um, I would also like to um, add on to what you were saying before I asked my question with regards to AGI, because when I first heard of this bill, um, honestly, it also came to mind and I asked myself, what is going to happen to industries here? But then I just took my mind back and then I asked myself, how many local sanitary pad companies do we have in Ghana currently? And so whatever the situation is, is actually not working. And so for me, I don't even know what the fears and the worries of AGI is because whatever, they, whatever system they've put in place up until now hasn't helped the local businesses in Ghana. And um, just yesterday, I met a company called Sanita one of their, their former owners who was producing cotton parts in Ghana, and I think they've gone out of business. I remember very well Fatex. I used Fatex when I was growing up. I, I rarely see Fatex un unless you go to the maternity ward. And shout outs to our, our government workers who would insist that you buy Fatex when you are going to deliver. <laughs> I mean, at least they are helping to keep that business running. And so I think that's for me, AGI, to really look at what the problems local manufacturers are facing and let's see how we can help them. Just yesterday as well, I was with a professor from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology talking about a student there who has come up with a new um, sanitary pad made of banana peels, if, I, if, if I'm wrong. I think these are things that locally we should be looking at and helping to support our partners 
as in international partners who are willing to also support us. Um, I'm so happy to be here and we are following keenly and um, whatever is going on, we are paying attention and definitely I'm happy that the conversation is um, crisscrossed um, type where we have the views of the international community. Obviously, they are not pleased with the current situation and the fact that we have decided to act, um, it means that we really want change and therefore we needed to do something about it. So this is a step in the right direction and I want to say congratulations to you for spearheading this and also the stakeholders that are solidly behind you. Thank you. Thank you very much once uh, let me say a big thank you again for this platform. Like I said for previous bills, I never had the chance of individual organizations coming together to play a key role in ensuring those bills go passed. So this is a real I mean it, it, it's a step in the right direction. It tells you how much interested we are in the subject matter. So what I see here is the next line of action. The next line of action from my side is going to be the continuous follow-up with Parliament to ensure that we have the final drafts done um, and possibly get the draft gazetted even before Parliament resumes. So that as soon as Parliament resumes, we can do the first reading of the bill and move it to the next level in Parliament. And whilst doing that, there is uh, what we call the pre-laying stakeholders engagement. So beyond this engagement, there will be another engagement. Uh, I know that we were considering the 4th of October, but 4th of October looks like um, uh, a very busy time for Parliament itself because Parliament is hosting the 66th uh, Commonwealth Parliamentary Association Conference. And so it looks like that may take, I mean, a bit of next week. So it's likely that if we don't get a confirmation today on the 4th of October, then exactly one week from the 4th October, by which time the Parliamentary uh, Association meeting would have been over, uh, we will be able to have that because we would want to have speaker at this engagement. And because of the Parliamentary Association meeting next week, speaker himself may not be able to attend. And so uh, it's likely from here, I'll be going back to Parliament to see if we can do 4th, then we probably may do 11th of October. By which time we will know that the parliamentary, uh, the common parliamentary association meeting is over. We can have speaker, we can have majority leader, we have minority leader. All the key actors, the, the, the gender groups, the, uh, the uh, committee on gender, we can invite all of them. In fact, we can send invitation to all the 40 female MPs and ensure that they are part of that engagement so that at the end of that engagement, they will all, we can get all of them on board even before the official gazetting of the bill. So 4th and 11th are critical times that we may be looking at. Now, apart from that, I think it would be good that all of us here, once we share a common goal, if we have our, our numbers and everything, we could all be put on one platform as a coalition against taxation of parts. And as and when we have other interest people, we can just add them to that platform so that Anytime we have timelines, we can share the timelines together. And we all know that, look, this is what's happening. And um, if there's going to be any major action, uh, whether it's a Twitter action or it's going to be um, physical demonstration, we all know. And then we can share with our, our colleagues and make sure that we can all participate. And I think with this, this should be a good starting point. And since uh, you've been working with the diplomatic community also, I think we can, one of these days, do a diplomatic engagement. That would be really, really great, you know, and get their perspectives on a tax handle like this and this proposal. What do you think? And we can have all of them share their views. And I believe that it mounts a lot more pressure. And then also, because from that angle, we could then get the diplomatic community to then send petitions to, to the presidency. Because if they send a petition to foreign affairs minister and then the president to say that, we've seen this bill, we think you need to support this bill because it will promote you know, gender parity and all that. The president will be willing to listen to them because then they are diplomatic partners, right? So that will be, that's an, ad, an addition to the advocacy. And if we're able to do this, I'm sure we should be able to do well. Yeah, so thank you very much. So the, the coalition will then plan a series of visits. So for example, we can plan a visit to the national chief imam. You know, the last time I heard, I read about, you know, because I'm from Medina, I read Quran version on 
I mean, I mean, menstrual cycle of women. In fact, it's an abomination to want to tax it in Islam. So you can you can imagine if the Islamic head makes a statement, you know, put a statement and say, look, this like it must not happen. Yeah. So then we can do a similar one. We can visit the Catholic Bishop Secretariat, the coalition. And we go with our media, everybody, and we visit them. We seek audiences. So we've come to you. This is our, our plea. And we'll get them to make a statement. And our media men will carry it out. We go to the Pentecostals. We go to, we just, we just follow it up. And once we do that, I am sure that we'll get all of them coming on board and we can pick it up. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very kindly. Then the House of Chiefs, regional House of Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah, these are the, the major people that we can get to push the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Truly African. It is everybody's desire to at least acquire a piece of land. In Ghana, lands are vested in traditional authorities, and these authorities are those who hold the pieces of land in trust of the people. And this accounts for about 80% of all lands in the country. So, school land, family land, then um, government land, I think, is about 20%. When government needs a plot of land, for development purpose, he has to go to these traditional authorities. Or if individuals also need land, they have to do the same. So they have to go to the traditional authorities or the family heads who are in custody of the land. Afterwards, they have to go to the Lands Commission, which is the body or the agent in charge of making sure the plot of land is registered. And when the individual wants to further de develop the land, then he has to go to the physical planning department to also get permits before that process can continue. But then, in spite of all that, there were a lot of challenges associated from the first phase of acquiring the land, the registration, and even getting the permit. These are a threat to security. Today, we are on the streets and want to interact with people about some of the challenges. When we talk about the challenges, it is only the people on the street who can give us true depiction of what they encounter or what goes on with regards to challenges associated with land acquisition in their country. So stay tuned, this is Street Talk, the only show that makes your opinion count. My name is Karis, we're going to have a fruitful discussion.
pacho um when ya as I see ya and Tawantawaba Hope. Oh Debbie even do not as I do cotta a song with Sena with Diano, O Kwaku as I see one face. Two come on a face, no. I'm a question. No my dear Mako Trashi. Two could trash now. I feel they are called window set, work of food. Yeah, um, lands commission. Lands commission, yeah. To call Sadia or Koshama, we are three days' time now. No one says I send out free. I feel what my payment of the half. To my payment of the half, we are your woman, you are or summer, we are. I feel what can you refuse? None as I see what food you are saving you. That process are all firm. Uh, process I'm a family for me, Thomas as a salon family. If you own your issue, be a langard, same be a oh, Debbie, and yet in the immediate langard for the Obian or Banas as a so. Because you're higher, I mean, you say langard for a ransom. Yes, sir. But your challenges are worse as a tall a business. Okay, why you have for to be in particular in general. If I am as a seminal. Recently, now I say, you know, as a seminar, be here, simply because formally, no, I'm not the kind see or any be later, and so now no no questions now for from buy, for from no buy, no. Oh yeah, it's like old lands, na, I walk with them that that na, I hear the beginning of the community, no. Oh yeah, it's like our man for no, and register, no 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 sign more, no. I say, open your eyes, so I don't need to have a check right, that's it, no. But then, no no, I hear you, ma. Afterwards, no, most of the time, you it's never clear, no. You will clear land be your wa, or my reserve for projects in case in future time projects bar. Now, anka chief no are provided for government now. I that project no na abuwa community no development. By in the way round, no, there are young women in the area tini and so far as your community no me dear, me to maga say me ni ni ekoso. Uh, recently, no land, no. Yeah, we say. We want to turn the bridge now. The so far, no case is here, crown. No, in case it be a government project, bar. Unless it be a chief, no. In my view, no, it be a member case. A man for no. Omo DJ tour now. And so now, I then a couple land and so now government now here. That project now my. It in as a side day. They are meeting me a car from a crown. Oh, for now they sell bus, sell pass as here. And when they say be a land owners, no, they be walk home. Until go home, not in case of be. Not in only near the side of the community. Yeah, say sell car, chief no idea. Yeah. Any the problem there, no. Yeah, no be near the other. Yeah. But But problem By recently now, I could say land no more to end baby. In the way no, you to be very easy say. So in case if you are land, now say open some project on person with you digging feet. But in actual sense, the digging fields, you know, before we do digging fields, yet to work, cities in here, there, there be a whoa, there be a land, no whoa, whoa, but talk, there be a family land, no be a town, ma. In the, so whoa, but talk, no be a brother, be a yard, no be a be a urban bush, ya no. Some crop, no one of us sorry, I can see, there be a edge with digging fields. So one in here, there, yeah, ma, one here, there, and here project, no. In the, we start here, no, so on my cable. In the, we be sa. I resist, but recently they maintain home the beer side beer here. So we no more demand for digging finny at the end. It started. Eba Street Talk Show is. Eh, me da wa se. And if I say me, we say, I can't be now fast. So to wa say, now the way your problem be at is at the same time. Oh, me ya say say no, no kware. Me wa do me ni ne yako oh ni ni chay papa ni chay. Yako no, ya di shina tuaba akun yako. Yako no si yako shay say ya maya ne hu sobe ya no. Non-coachama, 
Me ka bo hina ma no hina sanje ma me. O hina ka sabai, wo no twa sem bubu yi. O no ma me ti hina ni de, o ye straight forward man, straight by justice. Cause o de man a, o ka se o dini a o dini. O nya sa kanta him fo aba na, o ton ma we no ma ton ma, o ma ton ske ni bre boni a se o ma no, me hina de onti sa. Okay, so I plead with you to tone down on the, I mean, the tribal remarks, no. Second of all, one. And see, my person will say, um, seven years ago, you know, I can't remember how so ball, or they are not buying, or register, or buy a static structure, no, so, so, or take, or get permits, be an, and now then they will not buy any, just start. Me, I straight, me, I kaku kuku, kaku kuru, kaku kuku, kaku. Straight, no, I'm starting because since I was somebody from the same, because the name of Frau Bazisiano, scan every body, I'm going to be one, you know. Obeji ya fiunse wantu wanyo biyo so obeji ya fiunse wantu mi stati wa so straight. Si pasi mi zase uwa document se chesta asasini yo. Mi document in ya sato ye. Nas mi tim. On san kai ba den. Mi tim. Ya sati. Ni ngini anye ready ye. Nas mi tim. Problem biya nsu ni yo. Hmm. Babu kodi. All because when yon hini biya all bomba. Kama on hini nao asasini ya ni diya no. Ni bi biya ya straight 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 straight. Nto anti sa. Hmm. Anti sa. On ton mami san ko jima san ko mobi ufo. On the anti sacra. I don't foresee any challenges. Oh, Jin, this I be only documents. One call lands commission. One one register. I want some permit for you. Problem be a bad. She knew. She knew. I got to you, my baba. She 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 knew. Who did you know? Did you? Who's me? Did you know me? Did you? She knew. You only need anti sacra. It was easy. I'm out for how many years? Many years be a. The cook race is so bang bang. We want a man more than a cancer. We need to go be a one. Sir. Dacha sembi eni o, dacha sembi eni o. Pepa no oriye, enya e pepa ni ya setu yepi asa. Dacha sembi eni o. Mina misi ubi eni sembi na misi. Entu nse mina na kanso anu dia. Entu ubi eni o ba ba ihau ma juni kura. O ba ba mina na kanso anu ma juni kura o ba biya. Was makado si yonhi neno. Onye sa himfuni biu. Tongo tongo biu mno anti sa. Sa neti ni. Entu fini wa ba ba. Dacha sembi eni o. Eya chodo ta. So once you get a chief who is loyal enough to, I mean, secure your land for you, then you don't really, you will not go through or you not encounter some of the litigation issues others are encountering. That is what. My card is my me worry a humano. What I'm telling you, I say my CEO ain't no mada. Worry a humano. At the end of this week by June, July, no, maybe be I ready. Sign it in it. And then you tell me to make sure you need to know me and your papers, you know. Be be a taco taco. Me das. Me das. Me ko me me ang taco taco. I believe that is taco taco. Na yo eshe. Because me be sa se only challenges I ever as I say when I be ni say. Challenges I ever as I say no. Eh, biar asasi baku, biar no orang tua orang mani pa biar biasa nai. Izuna enti saya bansa, enti saya bansa. Se biar oh ini ubat tu asasi, biar mani pa biar mienu biasa. Enya faham sa. Asasi tu nyata mani pa baku a, enu anu nu. Eh, biasa zaman sekarang ni beri nak dia benci nu. We need to assassin one. We are Ubia. What to assassin? We are Ubia. What to assassin? We are Ubia. Yes, we are Jumanu. No, we are Swapa. Then we are Beji. We are Skafu. We are Ubia. Digging fee. We are Sudan. I didn't see it to be balanced. I didn't see it. I am in Fumia. We are not money balanced. Eh, we are not money balanced. It is sad to know why you fight. I say wash. Now I'm paying for no. What do you want? Nantia. Tia. Tia film. Na woma wamu jazz ni amana warrior, because eh sa eh how ye? Go be owa, be a the last money, be a no hata no dia kutoa sasi. Ha osi be a oba be bi bi kaka oni nema wo, nema he wosu. Na fi ube ti ube ube tu eskani be we no be ko be a no one sandi asasi na meni pa fufu. Ha fi be a kofe eskani be we no one sandi akuto asasi. Me wa eskani kwa unlock be a wuti aneka. Then it's cash. Then it's cash. It is any one day, in fact. I say, what's your name? I'm from Russia now. I'm from Jai. I say, any one now, I'm from Russia. But you want to encounter BB, sir? But you see. Where's your BB? So, what did you do? Okay, I'm going to be in fact, I'm going to be in the middle of the day. But, I'm going to be in the middle of the day.
Oh, <laughs> Yeah, now See <laughs> If I make Kelly, but me now for the FM Boss Kelly, Boss Kelly, Boss Kelly, yeah. Kelly, nice name. Yeah. Eh, and see, as I say, home and Tawan Tawan Commander, any more, you know. And see, once I didn't share what more you're doing. Oh, my didn't share all as I say, home, come on, come on, say, or say, I'm buying a share. No, or pay me, no, you're found. If you say, and say, I'm buying a say, we're to answer some way, you know, we are to answer some way. A bass and an armor to qua, abba, we need win to question on them. Hey, 
Now we so cool, we cool. Recently, I'm saying, I'm at some say, I'm say boys be who are so on say same be one. Oh, I'm say, I think say Akwemu say, in two hours we're running baby. Yeah, the assassin one same day was say abandon she. No can, no pay. You mad my youth in the air yet? Oh, and yes, I. I'm say boys they want move to this area man. I'm say as youth in the we can say man we are. I'm not so pesca. Youth do pesca. We can say man we. Yeah, we man is scared. Now, no, I had that. And it's my end. A human is so cross at the noon to me. Qua scanning tea. Obey a human simple be. No, I had no idea. It's an answer scow munti, nipacum. Obey a six cow munt, obey it. Oh, you know, yes, car. Eh, tinipacum, the obey the book, no, I just can. Eh, Timisha was our by neighbor. No ban on the youth in the back, sir. Eh, no page, you must be my youth no more yet. Yes, I dare you to in the margins no more. Eh, ya jinx them. Eh, I can say agency. Oh, 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 and the mention down for many boss. Maybe I made many boss, but maybe I will be free. Yeah, my bunny no egg, 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 kai kai or moho, or more kick or moho boom on social media now. Or more, or monka boom is or more the pressure air to our banks to say more problems. I want us to our boss. We if it is a land, the abit is on employment. I want us to our boss. Senka, I buy no end fix it. Now I drink your honey. Oh, yeah, my dream church and say, I'm a boon here, Canada, no one here can ever say a year to my year. It's near home, say, was a gun, like on my no. I government name bra, no make pay being country youths now. Eh, youths, let me yeah, and they let me pay to my own, I'm paid to my family. Send a boo on a pile, sorry, I near qua, even you have been there, am I in Savede and Sabacoya? Can you say, dear boys, and they begin them? So, yes, I am. Yes, I am. We will come when I will come with for scanty. We cast a brave you, my memo scar. It's not so only scanty, no, but corner of a coji, no cumni pacon. Due to assassin, one sense, same meeting. Obey it if it's so niska. Sana, my margin chair. What are some of the land litigation issues or some of the challenges associated with a current land in the country? The problem we have with land acquisition in this country is um, when you buy the land, you may buy it from one family, then uh, another family will come in and challenge you with the ownership that uh, the one who sold the land to you is not the rightful person. And with that, you need to stop whatever you are doing and seek for whatever uh, uh, and seek for your right to build or do what you want to do on the land. And what I know is uh, for this area, we have the families and we have the chiefs. Sometimes the chiefs sell the land, then some elders within the family will come and challenge. And sometimes to someone from the family will come and sell the land. Then maybe the true owners are not living around. They will later hear and come and challenge you. At that time, you have committed yourself and you don't know what to do. And sometimes they won't mind you. They will take the land from you and sell it at a higher price to someone else. Have you acquired land yet? Yeah, I've acquired one here. I, I bought it for a friend at Japan. And after paying the money, almost full payment, the chiefs call that that land belongs to the town and they are not supposed to sell it. And I did a search which proved that the land is vacant, which uh, I, I, that encouraged me to start paying. So I paid, I've, I've almost finished paying the land and the chiefs call that where they have, you know, demarcate for me, supposed not to be sell, uh, it's for the town. So. They are going to, I say, oh, who am I? I'm a native here. So what do we do? The chief says, you go and, you know, you send his people to go and give me another place. So 
it is still pending we haven't you know get a solution to it yet so this is how it is and i'm a farmer these days what the farmers are going through you will be there then an estate developer will come that this place belongs to them ah why, why, why how come it belongs to you so our forefathers uh, gave it to somebody and you know what is going on in this area these days about land issue it's very bad where i'm doing my farms it is within the Nsawa municipality it is called ahunjo and the chiefs there we bought the land around 1995 31.55 acres this it was uh, it was lease agreement for 50 years after 50 years the people uh, along the line the people came that the 50 years will not meet their life they will die before the 50 years so they want us to negotiate and sell it convey the land to us outright so it belongs to my uncle one mr sechijan yeah. okay so it means that when it comes to challenges associated with land acquisition it, it doesn't happen only in the cities like accra it happens in areas like here what do you think can be done to stop this me to me my suggestion is whoever want to sell land should go to the town and country planning whoever want to sell land should go to the town and country planning and put it before them that my village is for toby we have a portion of land we want to sell then the land like town and country planning will direct them they should have the road here they should do this they should come and demarcate the distance to them do search and you know they should they should they should come and prove ownership they should come the family that comes that they want to sell their land should prove ownership to the council which is the government they should prove ownership to the government so if anybody comes to buy one it is in the government system that this family owns the land already so when you buy it you may not have those challenges like the estate people do Ronaldinho, where do you come from? Um, I'm coming from Futobi. Okay, here? Yeah. yeah. All right. Do you own a land? Um, yeah. You do? Yeah. All right. Uh, how did you get it? Was it easy? Was it difficult? Uh, well, I would say it's a bit easy, a bit difficult. Yeah, due to some few challenges. Yeah. Can you tell me some of the challenges you encountered? Okay. Um, when... Officially, when we went in to search the land, the one who told us about the land was um, like the land belongs to them. Um, but later on, it was not direct that the land belonged to. It was a family issue. So later on, we have to go and see both families and then to, to see if the land is for one person or the entire family. So it took us some time to, to deal with that issue. Okay. Have you registered your land? Yeah. Where? Yeah, in some. I mean, okay, at the Lands Commission? Yes, at Insam, yeah. How was the process? Was it difficult? Yeah, it's also difficult. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, I don't know. Uh, Ghana as a whole, there's a whole lot of issue that's happening here. You know, the, the Ayana Kwafoka said, if you don't know somebody in, in, in maybe in governance or somebody in some high office, then your, your matter or your issues are going to be complicated. Uh, sometimes when we go to the office to, to go and check on our, our land, uh, there's a whole lot of issue. Sometimes they will try to pay something, they will try to go and come. It's a whole lot of complication. Uh, but then, by the grace of God, we've, we've been able to go through. As in pay bribe? Yeah, let, let me put it that way. Because if somebody tell you that until I, I work on your staff for you urgently, you, you should do something. What's the meaning? So how do we overcome this challenge of um, land litigation and other associated challenges with land acquisition in the country? Thank you. Um, Ghana, there's one thing that I always say is that Ghana, we need law enforcement. Because I believe lands and the, the land agency or the, the office that is taking care of our land issue in Ghana here must have an institution that, that enforces its regulations concerning the land issue. If not that, then we'll be killing ourselves. Uh, because, say, so you're sure, oh my when we look at Ghana, we, our, our laws are very, very too flexible. 
that anybody can do anything at any any, any given time without any proper checkup. You know what I will say is that until our laws of this land are being enforced, things will go worse. Thank you. So in the midst of the economic hardship, people also manage to save some funds to acquire pieces of land, but unfortunately they they lose them to wicked and cruel chiefs and other landowners, according to the people we have spoken to. And that is why the youth and others are calling on the government to fix it, to fix the country, to fix the challenges associated with land acquisition in the country, because the issues are a threat to security. My name is Karis, we're going to meet again next week. the money for that list of expensive building materials you sent to me. The price of the iron rods have been increased too much, are they? Madam, relax. Look, that's not why I even called you. I just visited IPCP, where the engineers told me everything about Chosako first floor. Chosako, please, those people are expensive. Are they not the people building those big, big houses in town? I beg, don't scratch your guys. Madam, in fact, I used to think the same of until I visited their office today, and they gave me an estimate of how much it will cost. No more, the estimate is free, oh. It's cheaper than the one I even sent you. Wow. Building contractors, foremen, masons, visit IPCP, the Trasaco Fast Floor. Engineers will assist you build an affordable, faster, and stronger building. Oh, madam, madam. <laughs> it is done. Wow. Trasaco Fast Floor. Stronger, faster, and affordable. This is a Trasaco construction product. Welcome to Reed Royal Hotel. In the recent light of pandemic, we are taking utmost care to ensure the safety of our guests. We have to change with the times, and the hotel industry is used to change. Joya Hotel is located at number one second reach, Cape Coast, Ghana. For more information, contact plus two three three zero three one two zero zero three two two two. Email admin at richroyahotel.com.gh. Rich Royal Hotel, richly inviting, comfortably yours. We look forward to welcome you soon. Trasaco Estates, home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes, presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs, a premium master planned community of service plots, 
surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to experience the ultimate showcase of talent at the National SHS Football Competition, Soccer Fest 2023. Feel the passion running through the veins. As young athletes from all 16 regions come together, fueled by an undying desire to claim glory for their schools. Every kick, every shot, is an expression of determination and relentless pursuit of victory. We invite all potential sponsors and partners to join us in this exciting journey. Together, let's create a legacy that would resonate for generations to come. The National SHS Football Competition. The stage is set. The battle lines. Get ready to witness the birth of legends. Show your support. Call 050-497-5669 or 055-669-0504. I want to grow old by your side All my days and all my nights I die at the About me, you know, do well. At all. I don't know where you came from, but when you get home, please tell the devil hello. I, mom, she giddy, ah, nakuf, hoy, wicked, ah, I, mom, she giddy, punk, fire, motor, liquid. I don't know, 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 Shut up and bend over. I let your back out to the talking over. I don't want to reason bad things no more. I don't want to go back to where I did before. Make nobody stress me, let this stop me. I sip my alcohol. I don't want to reason bad things no more. I don't want to go back to where I did before. Make nobody stress me, let this stop me. This is Swift Africa.
previous seasons, he saw this. You are not allowed to hawk or preach in commercial vehicles. The perception in Ghana is abortion is illegal. And we don't follow up with the exceptions. The existence of the country marriage is no prerequisite for, for the ordinary marriage. Yes. And now, are you ready for this? Some people express the fact that they don't go on leave with pride. I could let it leave like they term it is illegal. Because in Ghana we don't have enough lawyers and the artist can apply for bail where well, he has no lawyer. Knowing full well that you have an STI and you do not reveal that to the person and you have the sexual contact with the person. It is also part of um, domestic violence. Join the Law Express panel for relevant, informative and educative topics. It is clear that if the court grants bail, it is the registrar of the court that has the power to deal with uh, execution of the bail. All matrimonial properties that are sold without the consent of the other party are actually not important. for that list of expensive building materials you sent to me. The price of the iron rods have been increased too much, are they? But now, relax. Look, that's not why I even called you. I just visited IPCP. What engineers told me everything about Chosako fast floor. Chosako, please, those people are expensive. Are they not the people building those big, big houses in town? I beg, don't scratch your guys. But now, in fact, I used to think the same of until I visited their office today and they gave me an estimate of how much it will cost. No more, the estimate is free, oh! It's cheaper than the one I even sent you. Wow. Building contractors, foremen, masons, visit IPCP, the Trasaco Fast Floor. Engineers will assist you build an affordable, faster, and stronger building. Hello, for Trasaco. Oh, madam, madam. <laughs> it is done. Wow. Oh, Trasaco Fast Floor. Stronger, faster, and affordable. This is a Trasaco construction product. Trasaco Estates, home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes, presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs, a premium master plan community of service plots surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call. In previous seasons, he saw this. You are not allowed to hawk or preach in commercial vehicles. The perception in Ghana is abortion is illegal. And we don't follow up with the exceptions. The existence of the country marriage is no prerequisite for, for the ordinance marriage. Yes. And now, are you ready for this? 
some people express the fact that they don't go on leave with pride. Accumulated leave, like they term it, is illegal. Because in Ghana we don't have enough lawyers, and the artist can apply for bail where he has no lawyer. Knowing full well that you have an STI and you do not reveal that to the person and you have the sexual contact with the person, it is also part of um, domestic violence. Join the Law Express panel for relevant, informative and educative topics. It is clear that if the court grants bail, it is the registrar of the court that has the power to deal with uh, execution of the bill. All matrimonial properties that are sold without the consent of the other party are actually not the point. Monday, the 9th day of October 2023. Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News on Pan-African Television with me, Gregory Perkin Tinamwa. We are coming to you live from our studio at number 48, Swanika Street in Abilene. We are also live across some 46 countries on the African continent, Europe, and some parts of South America. Now, coming up this afternoon, the Opposition National Democratic Congress announces that it will hold parliamentary primaries in five constituencies on October October 28th and 31st, and also coming up, former Auditor General of the Republic of Ghana, Daniel Yao Domilevo, has gives his say on the laws on unexplained wealth and how it affects corruption in public places. Now, bring you details of these and many other stories, including sports, business, and lifestyle, over the next 56 minutes. I'll take a quick breather. I'll be back with the news in detail. How many thanks for staying with us? Let's move straight to our first story for this afternoon's bulletin where the Opposition National Democratic Congress will hold parliamentary primaries in five outstanding constituencies on October 28th and 31st, 2023. Now, a statement is said by the party listed in Gumwa Central constituency, Amenfi East, Takwan Swahim, Evalue, Ajomoro Guerra, and Akontombra as these constituencies. Now, according to the release, the primaries for the Ododododu constituency in a will be held on October 31, 2023, due to the final funeral rite of the late Gamanya. Now, I'll take you through except of the statement that was released by the party to this regard, which says the Functional Executive Committee at their meeting held on 4th October 2023 have fixed dates for your parliamentary elections due to the final funeral rite of the late Gamanya on the 28th of October 2023. Your parliamentary election will take place on Tuesday, 31st October 2023, instead of the 28th October. A branch and daughters of the forms of aspirants have been paid uh, as far as March 2023, whilst constituency executives should have paid up to August 2023. So, this was the release sent by the party to the Odododu constituency. Uh, with regards to their parliamentary primaries, which will take place on October 31, as against the other four constituencies who have their primaries on October 28, due to the final funeral rite of the late Gamani. Now, let's move to other stories where former Auditor General Daniel Yadomelevu has described as defective Ghana's laws on asset declaration and um, unexplained wealth. Now, in an exclusive interview with Pan African News, he stressed that the laxity of Ghanaian laws on asset declaration has made the work of agencies such as the Office of the Auditor General in tackling corruption in public offices laborious. That people can exploit, especially through collusion, to take money out of the public funds. Hence, internationally, it has been acknowledged that people who hold those positions of trust, who are holding our public funds or resources, may have to declare their assets and liabilities, not only assets, assets and liabilities. Because before you assume office, maybe as a political leader, you might have gone to borrow 100 million. 
and within a week or two maybe you have paid it and your salary if we put it together for a whole period that you'll be in office may not even come up to maybe two million or three million so we would like to know just in case our money is safe in your hands or you know money is fungible if you take government government money and put it in your pocket and you want to buy food with it the money will not say no this money is for government and so don't use it so as a result of that uh, there is a need for people to declare their assets to say that this is what I'm worth before coming to the office This is the debt that I have before coming to office and when they are living again the Constitution and the article 286 Provides that they also declare to say that now that I've finished serving you people This is what I have and this is the debt I have so that we can look at it and say that ah, this gentleman or lady well has done well or we are very doubtful that given your salary and the income or the sources of income you have, you will make those additional money. So there's now the need for what we call lifestyle audit. We have to do an, a lifestyle audit on you so to be able to establish whether genuinely those monies belong to you or we can say that it is monies acquired unconstitutionally. In fact, Article 2 says, I think clause 4, says that if the increase in your assets or your uh, reduction in your liability cannot be attributable to your income source, gift or any legitimate source, then it is money or uh, assets acquired illegally. Yes, so that is the role that, that the asset declaration system plays for us. And if well managed, it can also help in investigation of cases that come up later on. Because, you see, it is something you have done in the past, so we can look at it more reliably than when you just try to explain to us, giving excuses and uh, without imputing any guilt. Uh, at times you hear <coughs> public servants saying, look, even though you found so much money with me, but it belongs to someone else, it belongs to, you wonder whether they are banks or they are financial institutions, because if I have my money and my brother also uh, has his money, the two of us are supposed to keep our monies in our banks, not collect my, collecting my brother or my sister's money to keep. So this all would have gone away if the proper declaration was done. Very defective. In fact, in 1992, there was actually a public office and political office holders act, which was more demanding than what we have now under at 550. In that law, it provides that the auditor general should verify what you declare to him. So it's not a matter of you just filling forms and go and give it to the auditor general and say that here is evidence of what I owe or I own. But it must be verified. And again, that law even provides that the declaration made to the auditor general must be published within two weeks. So all Ghanaians should see it. That Daniel, when coming to office, has three bicycles and he has two shoes. So when we are going and now I have 10 Land Rovers and Land Cruisers and etc., then questions can be asked. But the most important aspect of it for the publication is the fact that because the auditor general is not God and cannot know all the assets and can be easily lied to if we publish it the society know that ah but when we look through your list of assets we can't find this building which just came up when we were in office so that brings about better away from the camp of the former auditor general the minority in parliament has expressed concern over the ministry of health extended delay in clearing anti-retroviral drugs at the ghana sports in response to a press statement issued by the letter on october 7 2023 they also described the actions as highly inappropriate and a dereliction of duty in safeguarding the health and well-being of Ghanaians. Now away from the Parliament of Ghana, former Vice-Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, Professor Nana Jino Pukwajiman, has encouraged ladies to eschew their fears and go for breast cancer screening. Now speaking at a program organized by 
the Greater Accra Regional Women's Organizer of the NDC, Madam Felicia Bote, in their Shaman constituency, the 2020 running mates indicated that early detection is very key in the treatment of breast cancer in case one has it. Cancer will be a year in my community. Now, Sanson has said that we said to me to be the idea how I do a year or one Japan only got to a film. Eighty, a two of these are called and Oberkan so Oban Tamanka, Oban Tamanka. It is a sea and a screen in Aban, sir. So be a more modern Ian Shay. The view of what I said, the doctor said, I can answer my family so many in Tama and come to me a boy. Na nurse is what she told me. So say who pa said we did the only thing my name she said when you can say we do it she will say we do it now in the early stage of the embryo. It's your best friend. We can now do it. Yeah. I'm still on the Breast Cancer Awareness Month in an interview with a diverse group of Ghanaians about their knowledge on breast cancer. Their responses touch on the prevailing understanding and awareness surrounding this disease. Amongst the participants, a range of perspectives emerge highlighting both gaps in knowledge and areas of awareness. Or some individuals express a firm grasp of the importance of regular screenings and early detection emphasizing the significance of self-examination. However, others acknowledge a limited understanding of the signs and symptoms. It's serious. Uh, I know of a couple of them that their breasts have been cut off. And as this month is a month that we are all celebrating and talking about breast cancer awareness, all of us have to see how best we can contribute to support and ensure that we eradicate or reduce the infection of breast cancer in Ghana. Eh, cancer won't say boah. But discussion on phone. Si cancer or issue on phone. Or you pause. One now the hand kin of the scandal shall be not yet to one of us. Pause now the action of us. Oh, that so. Said no, but she wa. Or you have a baby. So, what about it? Was there by your own benefits? I dare one year the best she said, no phone. Now, de. Was you actually a whoo ye? Who saw si come up? No, what yet to one of us say. ni <laughs> Emi <laughs> So watching the midday news on Pan African television with me, Gregory Pilkington. I'm going to go for a quick break. I'll be back with some more stories. Me, I've still not got the money for that list of expensive building materials you sent to me. The price of the iron rods have been increased too much, had I? Madam, relax. Look, that's not why I even called you. I just visited IPCP, where the engineers told me everything about Chosako fast floor. Chosako, please, those people are expensive. Are they not the people building those big, big houses in town? I beg, go and see guy. Madam, in fact, I used to think the same of until I visited their office today and they gave me an estimate of how much it will cost. No more! The estimate is free! 
It's cheaper than the one I even sent you. Wow. Building contractors, foremen, masons, visit IPCP, the Trasaco Fast Floor. Engineers will assist you build an affordable, faster, and stronger building. Ever Trasaco. Oh, madam, madam. <laughs> it is done. Wow. Trasaco Fast Floor. Stronger, faster, and affordable. This is a Trasaco construction product. Trasaco Estates, home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes, presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs. A premium master plan community of service plots, surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call. In previous seasons, he saw this. You are not allowed to hawk or preach in commercial vehicles. The perception in Ghana is abortion is illegal. And we don't follow up with the exception. The existence of the country marriage is no prerequisite for, for the ordinary marriage. Yes. And now, are you ready for this? Some people express the fact that they don't go on leave with pride. Accumulated leave, like they term it, is illegal. Because in Ghana we don't have enough lawyers. And the artists can apply for bail where well, he has no lawyer. Knowing full well that you have an STI and you do not reveal that to the person and you have the sexual contact with the person. It is also part of um, domestic violence. Join the Law Express panel for relevant, informative and educative topics. It is clear that if the court grants bail, it is the registrar of the court that has the power to deal with uh, execution of the bail. All matrimonial properties that are sold without the consent of the other party are actually not employed. Come back from that break now. Let's move to other stories where seasoned media practitioner Johnny Hughes has waded into the 20% tax imposed on sanitary parts in the country. Now, speaking to Amaprat on the couch, he also called for a review of the contentious and much talked about levy, which has negatively affected the lives of girls and women. This is long overdue, right. um, and to think that we have taxes on. Um, sanitary parts makes me think that maybe the formulators of the law and those who supervise and those who collect the taxes altogether assume or think that menstruation is a lucrative business mm -hmm. um, and and that for me is very backward if you ask me because if you look at the statistics from our population and housing census there are more women in Ghana than there are men oh, yes. so it just doesn't make sense for for a country that has there's that population of women to be thinking along those lines. I mean, people have been screaming. I mean, girls are missing school because they, they, can't, uh, they can't afford pads. Um, even if they can afford it, they go to school, there are no proper washrooms for them to swap their pads. Mm -hmm. We're busy talking about access and quality of education and yada yada, we make all the speeches, <clears throat> sign on to things. And we come back home and it's business as usual. Um, even the price of menstruation part, you know, sanitary part, has quadrupled, mm. if I'm allowed to say that, quadrupled, because this used to be like three CDs, five CDs, now it's gone 25 CDs, if I'm right. In your preference, you can <laughs> pay more for it. Right. Mm. I'm talking about the lease. Right. I'm talking about it used to be three to right. five CDs. Now it's gone beyond that, 25 CDs, 30 CDs, some 40 CDs and all of that. And you see, the... Policy makers for the leadership will always make the argument that, well, people are importing, they are running a business, and so we have to tax them decently. Uh, I agree. But if in a country where these things do not form the priority base of our decisions, but to give business people who are already accomplished 
who have set up who are profiteering tax waivers mm -hmm. that we have to examine our heads one by one and ask ourselves the very frank questions where do we position the girl child just the girl child i mean why should children of school going age be taxed for menstruating something which is of a monthly essence to them because it's part of their their biological makeup they, it's not as if they opted for it that's the first point my second point would be how this bill is not as important to our members of parliament in terms of the bills that we have seen go to parliament on a note of urgency for it to be passed i mean overnight overnight how this is not important to cabinet to say hey speed up the process because i remember in this country when um, we thought that vigilantism was a problem and it still is a problem we decided to pass a whole act in fact we gave both the ndc and the mpp an ultimatum and when they failed to go together into the room to reach a consensus the president ordered that look take this bill to and, and make sure it, it happens we even put an appendix to it and, and mentioned all the vigilante groups so this scale is not is not an essence this will come under successive governments both the ndc and the mpp who have said that look we want to give women an opportunity um to serve we want to make 30 percent of appointments available to them so let's say that happens because that has not happened and then this there's a woman who has to engage a school girl whatever it is and because of menstruation they are not able to 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 appear because they couldn't afford it it's a problem it's a big, big, big problem. And I don't think that as a country, we have done very well in treating our women right. Away from that former president of Ghana and flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, John Romani Mahama, has entreated Ghanaians to contribute their quota in building a prosperous nation in spite of the current economic hardships. And speaking at the third national conference of chief imams in Kumasi, he equally charged them to avoid any form of revolution following coups in West African countries like Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, and Niger. Corruption, economic mismanagement, disregard for the Constitution, human rights abuse, tribalism and nepotism have contributed to coups in some parts of Africa. Niger and Gabon have had their fair share of political upheavals this year, despite calls for restoration of democracy and good governance. In the midst of severe economic crisis, which has the propensity to trigger a potential coup, Former president and flag bearer of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, John Mahama, has charged Ghanaians to uphold the constitution and desist from supporting calls for a military intervention, which will retard the country's forward march. Delivering the keynote address at the third edition of the Conference of Imams in Kumasi, he equally criticized the Ekufuado led regime for its handling of affairs, which has made life extremely unbearable for the ordinary Ghanaian. Watching Pan African News, I'll take another break. I'll be back with some more stories. But ask. Me, I have still not got the money for that list of expensive building materials you sent to me. The price of the iron rods have been increased too much, are they? But now, relax. Look, that's not why I even called you. I just visited IPCP, where the engineers told me everything about Chosako first floor. Chosako, please, those people are expensive. Are they not the people building those big, big houses in town? I bet going to share that But now, in fact, I used to think the same of until I visited their office today and they gave me an estimate of how much it will cost. Yo, no, the estimate is real! It's cheaper than the one I even sent you! Wow! Building contractors, foremen, masons, visit IPCP, the Trasaco Fast Floor. Engineers will assist you build an affordable, faster and stronger building. Ever Trasaco! Oh, madam, madam! <laughs> it is done! Wow! Oh, Jesus! Trasaco Fast Floor, 
stronger, faster, and affordable. This is a Trasaco construction product. Trasaco Estates, home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes, presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs. A premium master planned community of service plots surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call. In previous seasons, he saw this. You are not allowed to hawk or preach in commercial vehicles. The perception in Ghana is abortion is illegal. And we don't follow up with the exceptions. The existence of the country marriage is no prerequisite for, for the ordinance marriage. Yes. And now, are you ready for this? Some people express the fact that they don't go on leave with pride. Accumulated leave, like they term it, is illegal. Because in Ghana we don't have enough lawyers and the accused can apply for bail where well, he has no lawyer. Knowing full well that you have an SDI and you do not reveal that to the person and you have the sexual contact with the person, it is also part of um, domestic violence. Join the Law Express panel for relevant, informative and educative topics. It is clear that if the court grants bail, it is the registrar of the court that has the power to deal with uh, execution of the bill. All matrimonial properties that are sold without the consent of the other party are actually not a voice. Trasaco Estates, home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes, presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs. A premium master planned community of service plots surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call. In previous seasons, he saw this. You are not allowed to hawk or preach in commercial vehicles. The perception in Ghana is abortion is illegal. And we don't follow up with the exceptions. The existence of the country marriage is no prerequisite for, for the ordinance marriage. Yes. And now, are you ready for this? Some people express the fact that they don't go on leave with pride. Accumulated leave, like they term it, is illegal. Because in Ghana we don't have enough lawyers and the accused can apply for bail where well, he has no lawyer. Knowing full well that you have an SDI and you do not reveal that to the person and you have the sexual contact with the person, it is also part of um, domestic violence. Join the Law Express panel for relevant, informative and educative topics. It is clear that if the court grants bail, it is the registrar of the court that has the power to deal with uh, execution of the bill. All matrimonial properties that are sold without the consent of the other party are actually not a voice. Welcome back from that break. Now let's do some more local stories. Where residents of Teshi in the Lejukuku Municipal Assembly of the Greater Accra Region have expressed their pain and frustrations over two abandoned bridges, which has posed an existential threat to their lives and safety. Now my colleague Godwin Jibon picked their thoughts and has more. Serve as an alternative route for motorists and other road users during the peak of hours. It is typical, therefore, to see heavy-duty trucks commercial buses and cabs, as well as private vehicles, 
all resorting to this route to reach their destinations. However, the rehabilitation of these bridges, which was to be the panacea to the heavy traffic that had been typical of the Teshinungwa stretch, has instead created new problems for commuters, particularly women and school children, as they struggle to cross them. The abandonment of these bridges not only disrupts the daily lives of commuters and residents, but also poses significant risks to public health, their safety, and most businesses in the area. According to them, the two bridges connecting Tashinungwa and other places in the greater Accra region was in good condition, but the government's decision to expand them has slowed its reconstruction, and with no construction workers or machinery on site, the project has been left unattended to. It is more than one year now. You can see the wall. This wall came down, the back one came down, and my whole house. I will open you to go to the hall and see what actually happened. The, nothing. We lost everything. We lost all everything. My brother brought these things from uh, South, uh, America, and it was at the outer house. The whole thing, it got, you know, it was so bad, they just packed it and threw it away. And after that, we haven't had anything. Even our DC here, I don't say he should come and, you know, pay, give us money or anything, but in sympathy, because he is representing the president. So if anything, he should come to the people and say that, oh, sorry, just sorry, that's all. Hmm? Not no. They are useless. They are nuisance. More than nuisance. I don't see anything. Why even they should go? I mean, the whole the politics is going in this country is so, I mean, very, very shameful. But, but what did they do? What did they do when the flood came? What did they do? Even if the government give them money to, you know, give some to the people, they won't do it. They will chop it. You will feel difficult because of how the distance is. So you will feel difficult every day when you are passing here. Like we are feeling difficult to pass some holding, holding people. They can't pass here unless you hold their hands before they can go. So we are suffering here. Oh, we want them to come and fix the road so that we can pass here, like first, the way we were passing here. Oh, first, this bridge was okay. But now, they say they are coming to open the gutter. That's why it, they did this thing. Falling into this gutter. So, it's very bad. For that one, we don't pass here. Why? Because you can enter and the rain will send you. So fix the distance, the road. That's all. Well, there was a bridge here, mm -hmm. and they did this thing. They said they are coming to do it, so almost eight months now. No, we did area, we did area, we did use normal road, we did go come, we did drive, we did go come. You know, make ready, say you go do, you go expand down. You can't dig the whole place. Now they come from, uh, how did they call them, C5. Like shortcut day here now, nah, then you go take enter a life. Mm -hmm. Now if you go wine now, nah, no like you know fine. The government we we know them already. We know say if they touch something unless next thirty years because they go finish. So some something you know make ready say you go do no make you no touch them. Some assembly members say although they have raised the matter at most meetings, the municipal chief executive has paid little attention to their grievances. In a quest. To find a solution to the menace, all efforts by the Pan African News team to engage the municipal chief executive of the Lojukuku Municipal Assembly on the issue never yielded the desired result. We, we have uh, about a large local story in a group of armed men who recently attacked the premises of an Accra based television station, United Television, causing extensive property damage which triggered panic among staff. Now, the motive behind the alleged attack is still shrouded in mystery as well as investigations are underway to identify the culprit. And in this news desk report, we will shift the attention to the shocking incident that has sparked widespread concern about press freedom and the safety of journalists in the country. On Saturday, October 7th, some men believed to be affiliated with the ruling New Patriotic Party, NPP, stormed the premises of the Accra-based TV station, temporarily interrupting a live broadcast. 
they threatened to attack the host and her panel, accusing them of disparaging the ruling administration unfairly. The attack comes after a panelist on the show ripped apart a letter from the national leadership of the MPP, urging the station to reform the show since it frequently unfairly criticizes the akufuado led government. While Ghana has largely been immune to the terrors of extremism, this recent attack on UTV is a stark reminder of the lurking threat to press freedom in the country. Let's cast our minds back to a similar incident that occurred on December 2nd, 2017, where Thak stormed the studio of Radio Justice, based in Tamale, and assaulted the presenter of a program and his three panelists, disrupting the live broadcast in the process. The attack has injured the presenter, Eunice Yirfa, and vandalized the console, microphones, computers, and furniture of the station. Fast forward to December 21st, 2017, four journalists were physically attacked by some security officers manning the NPP party headquarters in Accra. The four journalists were from TV3, City FM, and Ghana Web. Also, on March 27th, 2018, one of Ghana's budding and fearless journalists Latif Idris was brutally bitten to near death at the headquarters of the Ghana Police Service. The journalist who works with the multimedia group was not beaten by facts. He was beaten by police personnel, the same people he would have had to run to if he had been attacked by hoodlums. His crime was for doing his job as a journalist by asking police officers a question at a time when the officers had been deployed to maintain law and order by dispersing a supposedly rowdy crowd. Surprisingly to the police, the approaches for maintaining law and order on that day included the resort to physical violence against harmless journalists. The vicious and shameful attack on Mr. Idris is not an isolated incident, neither is the recent attack on UTV. It adds to a tall list of other incidents of attacks involving several other journalists in Ghana in recent times. Sadly, security Security agencies and especially the police have been among the leading perpetrators of attacks against journalists. Meanwhile, the Ghana Journalist Association has strongly condemned the attack, reiterating that the right to free expression and freedom of the media are key pillars of our democracy and must be fiercely protected. To mitigate the risk of future attacks, it is essential for Ghana to ramp up its efforts in addressing its vulnerabilities. As investigations into the UTV attack continue, the incident serves as a wake-up call for Ghana, a call to protect its media institutions and uphold press freedom. That will be all for local stories. Up next is business. And business, the horticulture sector in Ghana is growing fast and has the great economic potential for young people to find a job or develop entrepreneurial skills. And in this report, Margarita Chuku assesses and evaluates how the industry has fared in the midst of a deepening economic crisis. The culture is the science and art of growing flowers and ornamental plant. It also plays a major role in the economy by generating employment, providing raw materials to various food processing industries, and higher farm profitability due to higher production and export earnings from foreign exchange. In Ghana, the fast-growing industry has recorded some tremendous strides amidst daunting economic difficulties. Pan-African News caught up with Gabriel, a horticulturist at Abelinte who underscored the role of horticulture and also pointed out teething challenges affecting its sustenance. A flower there, who is a non a DCC, if he flower and so so ma and pomodin a man from a papa are a uniform oxygen. So I tell you, the man in June say, Ubia be your flower and say, Emma, acetram and from an air come come. Oh, the edifia butchery, any war, the yinya way I am my mohanum. Nanina, 
you do our dem, we be bar or semi pedia, you do our abontin so, we be our bar or semi de miare, intimi pedia, me de cosam who are in the room, and our flowers in the room, said a medic and canoe, and the DCC and Montesuma and Bontia Fenus so a womb. And tis order to Tomoa, not just so be our de a yan in Tiawaba, who bones our bar, who knew who she would not be to watch as we are dear, 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 we are Sanity, Yajuman sanity. A beam so soon flowers and a yen and you are said, Dear Sissy, if you inquire, be why you did. A boy, dear Drew. You want different, different, different social. That's a session, sir. You will be an any day. So I say, you will baby spider. So I'm so proud to be a friend, baby spider. You will be a dear ficus. We as so I will be a dear day, ye dear. So I say, into flowers in the day. Who can see a bia, who babies, you know, who are the announcer, or Pessy, a young moon, and she moon church will be bia. Yeah, yeah, honey, and a money pump, bread will be an air chum. The government's contribution to the expansion and sustainability of horticulture is also crucial to Ghana's crumbling economy, which has come under intense criticism. For Pan African Television, Margarita Chuku's report read to you. That's it for business up next is international news. On the international front, Israel's brutal response to the operation by Palestinian resistance groups has been harshly criticized by human rights organizations and activists. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hinted at a ground invasion during his address to the nation on Saturday, October 7, more than 16 hours after the Palestinian resistance movement launched via Operation al Asqa Flats. The move would be a serious escalation in Israeli aggression against Gaza. Hours after the start of the operation, Israeli forces began a campaign of intensive bombings inside Gaza. The airstrikes have destroyed several civilian buildings in besieged Gaza Strip, including a 14-storied building housing various administrative offices. According to the Palestinian Health Ministry, an estimated 313 Palestinians have been killed in Israeli attacks so far, with over 2,000 reportedly injured as of publication. Palestinian resistance forces in occupied Gaza, Hamas, Islamic Jihad and others launched the coordinated al Asqa flood early Saturday morning, attacking inside 1948 borders through air, sea and ground forces. Hamas claimed to have fired around 5,000 rockets inside Israel. The number of Israelis killed have exceeded 600 according to local Israeli media with over 2,000 wounded. According to local reports, dozens of Israeli soldiers, including some top officials, have been taken hostage by the Palestinian resistance forces and taken to Gaza. During his TV appearance, Netanyahu threatened to make Gaza a deserted island, asking over 2 million of its Palestinian resistance to leave the enclave. He called the surprise attack by Hamas and other forces unprecedented. In a statement on Saturday, Hamas al Qasim brigades described Netanyahu's threat as broken record, claiming that the operation al Asqa flood will continue. The statement also claimed that the number of Israeli hostages are many times more than what Netanyahu believes it to be. Ismail Henier, head of Hamas, said in a televised address on Saturday that Israel was responsible for Saturday's attack as it repeatedly ignored Palestinian warnings about breaching the red lines on attacks against al Asqa. Enough is enough. The cycle of intifada and uprisings and revolutions in the battle to liberate our land and our prisoners languishing in occupation prison must be completed. He declared that Palestinians will win the battle. Lebanese resistance force Hezbollah launched missile attacks inside Israel borders on Sunday targeting illegal military bases inside occupied Sheba farm areas. Hezbollah claimed to have fired three missiles on the path of liberating what is left of our occupied Lebanese land and in solidarity with a triumphant Palestinian resistance. 
Israel has already cut electricity to Gaza apart from deciding to completely halt the movement of fuel and goods to the enclave besieged since 2005. This may further complicate the humanitarian situation in one of the world's most densely populated regions. Several demonstrations have been taken out in support of Palestinian resistance in different parts of the world. In Iran, large-scale demonstrations were held across the country where people celebrated the initial success of Palestinian resistance against occupation forces. In cities across the United States, Palestinian diaspora groups, anti-war organizations, and progressism left movement have organized emergency demonstrations calling on the U.S. government to cut off funding to Israel and in support of the Palestinian struggle. Several people condemned Netanyahu's threat of harming civilians stating it could constitute a war crime as per international humanitarian law. Meanwhile, the UN Security Council is set to meet on Sunday to discuss the latest situation in Gaza. Credit to international partners, the People's Dispatch for the international stories. Now up next is Sports News. Ghana will engage the United States of America in a high-profile friendly at the Jordan's Park in Nashville, Tennessee on October 17, 2023. Now, the fixture will serve as a vital preparation for the 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifiers set to commence in November 2023. The Black Stars have a storied history with the United States having eliminated them from the FIFA World Cups in 2006 and 2010. The team will be eager to secure their first victory on U.S. soil in the all-time series between the two nations. Under the guidance of coach Chris Hilton, Ghana is currently undergoing a rebuilding phase, aiming to make a strong impact in the prestigious continental tournament as the four-time African champions aim to secure a spot in the prestigious tournament, this match against a formidable opponent like the United States will provide valuable insights and opportunities for fine-tuning their strategies. The last meeting between Ghana and the United States dates back to 2017 when the Black Stars suffered a 2-1 defeat at the Pratt and Whitney State. Next is Lifestyle. This Damba festival has been celebrated by the Mulis in the northern part of Ghana on the theme Enhancing Cultural Diversity and Quality Education. Now, the event was also used to sensitize women to vigorously pursue their goals in life with bulldog tenacity. of Damba, which the Somo Damba followed by the Narkins Damba on the 17th day, which the Berkusi, which is the climax of the celebration coming off on the 18th day of the month of Damba. Activities that mark the festival include prayers and fasting, as well as a procession of people on a horseback amid drumming and dancing. 
The festival is the occasion for most people to purchase new clothes as everyone wants to look beautiful. The male dress in colorful, hand-woven smocks that are designed for dancing while women wear traditional clothes wrapped around their waist and adorn themselves with jewelry. Municipal Chief Executive for Yendi, Alhaji Ahmed Yusuf Abu Bakari, gave a narration of the festivity which is synonymous with the glorification of Chief Tansi. So, first of all, it is the Gamba Festival, which is celebrated by Dagombes, Nanumbes, Goyes, Wales, and Mampuses. Now, it's believed to be celebrated in commemoration of the birth of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Am I Muslim? So I must be proud of that. I'm a Dagomba, I must be proud of that. I'm the Muslim chief executive for Yeni. That is the uh, traditional capital of Dagbong. That's Yeni. So all the Dagbongs in Dagbong, the climax here in Yeni. I, I, as you can see, the gathering here is something you cannot describe. We have people from far, people from abroad, people from Togo, and people from all over the, uh, the country are here. And you can see that nobody, nobody is disturbed. Anyone who touches, who travels on the foot of anybody, oh, he gets a matter of saying, oh, I'm sorry. This is a sign of peace, absolute peace. Either to gather here, let's not celebrate the celebrate Daba. Today, we are celebrating Daba because there is peace. And we, if there is peace, we have the same thing to the Almighty God and the President of the Republic who helped us to resolve the issue of Dagbong so that we are not having peace and we are not celebrating the Dagbong. We hope in future to, I mean, to modernize it, to ensure that any time we're going to be Dagbong, we will come together and think of the forming projects so that from the, this Dagbong to the next Dagbong, the given project that we should bring to the Dagbong and to the capital of Dagbong City or Dagbong State. A historian of Dabon culture, Haruna Mohammed M. Burudiba, and public relations for the Bewa Palace, Yakubu Musa shared similar views. Since 16th century, during the era of Nazanjina, and then it was brought to Dabon by Islamic scholars. You know, they used to do it in a smaller way until the chief realizes realize it and inquire from them as to why they are doing what they have been doing they broke it to the chief and chief told them that if that is the case then there is no need of doing it that way because they told him that that marks the birth and then the naming ceremony day of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so it was then that chief said no if that is the case when it, the date comes then he should get a bull and get food so that they will do it in a bigger way. So that was how it began. That is why the 17th day is named as Nadamba. So that one is chief's own. So when that day comes, chief has to circumambulate around the cow and pray over it because the belief is that God has created human beings and created animals for their consumption, but not all animals are consumable. So when chief is to do that, you will pray over the cow so that even if it is not consumable, God will bless it for the sake of the gathering. So that is why circumambulation is very important. Wife of Yana Abukari II, overlord of Dabon, Napaga Kasiya Asana Salifu, entreated women to vigorously pursue their goals in life meticulously. I use this opportunity to thank the organizers of this year Damba Festival because they have organized it very well. And also I want to tell our women in Dagbo, they should be using this kind of gloves because the traditional gloves are so unique that when you wear it, everybody know where you are coming from. And secondly, our ladies who are attending schools, the young, the young ones, who are attending school. There's no limit in education. But well, that's how we part ways on the midday news on Pan African Television with me, Gregory Pilking Tinamwa. Do join us on Newsbreak at 6 30 p.m. for more news updates from Ghana and around the globe. You have a pleasant afternoon.
African. Me, I have still not got the money for that list of expensive building materials you sent to me. The price of the iron rods have been increased too much, are they? But now, relax. Look, that's not why I even called you. I just visited IPCP, where the engineers told me everything about your circle fast floor. Chawanko, please, those people are expensive. Are they not the people building those big, big houses in town? I beg, go to the But now, in fact, I used to think the same of until I visited their office today and they gave me an estimate of how much it will cost. No more! The estimate is free oh. It's cheaper than the one I even sent you! Wow! Building contractors, foremen, masons, visit IPCP, the Trasaco Fast Floor. Engineers will assist you build an affordable, faster and stronger building. Ever Trasaco! Oh, madam, madam! <laughs> it is done! Wow! Trasaco Fast Floor. Stronger, faster, and affordable. This is a Trasaco construction product. Welcome to Rejoya Hotel. In the recent light of pandemic, we are taking utmost care to ensure the safety of our guests. We have to change with the times, and the hotel industry is used to change. Joya Hotel is located at number one second reach, Cape Coast, Ghana. For more information, contact plus two three three zero three one two zero zero three two two two. Email admin at richroyahotel.com.gh. Rich Roya Hotel, richly inviting, comfortably yours. We look forward to welcome you soon. Trasaco Estates, home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes, presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs. 
a premium master plan community of service plots surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to experience the ultimate showcase of talent at the National SHS Football Competition, Soccer Fest 2023. Feel the passion running through the veins. As young athletes from all 16 regions come together, fueled by an undying desire to claim glory for their schools. Every kick, every shot, is an expression of determination and relentless pursuit of victory. We invite all potential sponsors and partners to join us in this exciting journey. Together, let's create a legacy that would resonate for generations to come. The National SHS Football Competition, the stage is set. The battle lines, get ready to witness the birth of legends. Show your support. Call 050-497-5669 or 055-669-0504.
In previous seasons, he saw this. You are not allowed to hawk or preach in commercial vehicles. The perception in Ghana is abortion is illegal. And we don't follow up with the exceptions. The existence of the country marriage is no prerequisite for, for the ordinary marriage. Yes. And now, are you ready for this? Some people express the fact that they don't go on leave with pride. Accumulated leave, like they term it, is illegal. Because in Ghana we don't have enough lawyers, and the artist can apply for bail where he has no lawyer. Knowing full well that you have an STI and you do not reveal that to the person and you have the sexual contact with the person, it is also part of um, domestic violence. Join the Law Express panel for relevant, informative and educative topics. It is clear that if the court grants bail, it is the registrar of the court that has the power to deal with uh, execution of the bill. All matrimonial properties that are sold without the consent of the other party are actually not employed. to providing the world with an overview of today's China. Here, you will learn about how China works, how China thinks, and how China views itself and the rest of the world. Let China not be far away from you anymore. Join us every Saturday at 8 a.m. It's also a little bit of a cliche. I mean, we're all used to the what, what the James Bond scene, as it were, with all the ambassadors sipping champagne um, and seeming to do nothing else but dine and sip champagne at receptions. That is not true. That is a misconception of the time and the, the, the nature of the work. Diplomacy is not devoid of accountability. Everything that matters in Africa matters to Europe as well be it uh, demography, be it economy, be it security, be it culture. Can somebody tell me where Ghana is found in Africa? Is it west? Is it south? Is it north? Is it east Africa? Which one? Any idea? Any idea? It's like, it's like on the west. It's like, this is what? <laughs> I don't it's get it. the south. <laughs> It's to the West. It's to the West. Okay. South American ambassadors represented. I'm transforming the UN and making the UN more fit for business for Ghana is the prime objective that I have here. You are one outstanding journalist, broadcast journalist, who has put diplomatic tourism and, you know, diplomatic relations under one spotlight. I have been watching diplomatic um, a phase and I've waited <laughs> innovatively for my um, Your turn. opportunity <laughs> to come here as I watched uh, my colleague the EU right. um, last week. This is Diplomatic Affairs. My name is Harriet Nati.
African. Government must listen because it is said that the voice of the people is the voice of God. If you see how people have come out to join in this demonstration, we are not, we are not, we are not saying anything to the president. We are holding an institution of state accountable. Accountability is so very, very important. So if all the minority side in parliament, together with all the people who have gathered here, are asking that the BOG boss should go, I think the government must listen. In fact, if I were Addison, I would have resigned already. What is he looking for? Is Addison the only wise person who can run the BOG? You are at BOG. You have illegally printed over 70 billion without parliamentary approval. Just last year, you have lost over 60 billion. What do you want there? You are destroying the country. We don't need to wait for you to destroy the country before we realize that we have already been destroyed. And that's why we are demanding that ITC must go. Congratulate you for the peaceful demonstration that you have conducted today. That project, we were informed that you will be coming to present the petition to the governor. But the three governors, as we speak, are currently meeting the IMF and, uh, in a meeting, and there's nobody there. So the government has asked that I meet you and take the petition on his behalf, and we will accordingly respond to the petition. So first. Let me say that I feel very disrespected as the leader of the opposition in parliament for a simple reason that we demanded to present a petition to the governor of the Central Bank of the Republic of Ghana, otherwise known as the Bank of Ghana. The governor has two deputies, namely Deputy 1 and Deputy 2. Unfortunately, he has decided to disrespect us, and his two deputies have also decided to disrespect us by not being here and to receive our petition. We never said we are going to present our petition to the head of security, someone responsible for security, with all due respect. They have actually mismanaged the affairs of the central bank. They have the affairs of monetary policy today Ghana, our beloved country, is on 18 years. You are not the one responsible, and we will not give you our petition. Let me also say that, in summary, this governor and this Bank of Ghana, led by Governor Addison, has unilaterally printed up to 80 billion Ghana cities in two years without recourse to Parliament. Aside, they have unilaterally written off about 48 billion Ghana cities being government debt. Let me say that all of this was done 
without parliamentary, uh, uh, parliamentary approval. But let the governor be aware that, in fact, printing of money is like an alcoholism. The good effect or the perceived good effect comes immediately. But the hangover comes after the party. Governor Addison printed money to finance the champagne lifestyle of this President Akufuadu and Baumia lifestyle on an Apeteshi budget. Today, our country is on its knees. We will not accept it. The Central Bank of Ghana today is bankrupt, technically. You are insolvent. You have a negative equity of 51, 55.1 billion Ghana cities and a loss one year of 60 billion Ghana cities. You have again projected to incur additional debt in the year 2023 and counting. We will not allow you going forward to disrespect us and mismanage the affairs of the people of Ghana. Your act, Bank of Ghana, has indeed pushed 850,000 Ghanaians down the poverty line and we will hold you accountable. Now that he has decided to disrespect us, we will not present our petition. We will go and come back again. We will come back here again. And we will come back and demand to see him in person. The crowd you've seen is just the beginning. We will come back again. And I assure you, trust me, we will come back again. He should better come in here. If he thinks that the IMF is more important than the Parliament of Ghana, if he thinks that the IMF is more important than the people of Ghana, he's here because of the people of Ghana and not IMF. So let him deal with IMF, but we'll come after him. We will come after him. So we are here at the Adabraka market where the protest uh, is passing through. Now we commence at Obrasport where the protest has converged this morning around 8 a.m. So we are here at Adabraka market where some market women against government amongst a number of things, the mismanagement of the country. Now I'll be speaking to a few of them to bring their thoughts 